We were at Wheelock Stadium in the city of Riverside. RCC Tigers football on Riverside TV. My name is Gazal Hassan. This is Jeff Gorham. And the Tigers mount a title defense of their 2019 state title and their 2019 national championship, Jeff. JCGridiron.com gave the Tigers the Junior College National Championship, which they defend on this field. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a completely different team. Two years ago, they were throwing the ball all over the world. This year, they got a huge line, all beefed up with local guys, and they're going to do some damage. And I do think we're going to see a lot of run game. 24 to 6 win last week, playing a little ball control. They play a wide open offense this week, though, do the Tigers. They're playing saddleback. They had a 58 to 12 win last week against Glendale City College. The coaches changed. The new coach in charge, Kerry Crabb, takes over for Mark McElroy. But the offense looks pretty much the same. They're just flinging the ball everywhere, Jeff. 544 yards of offense, total offense last week. That is something we are got to be excited to watch. It's just to know that the Riverside City College defense can stop them. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Kraft, when I spoke with him, Jeff, he loved the pressure they got out of the three-man front, and the defensive backfield for RCC was up to the challenge against the speed of Long Beach City. It'll be a similar matchup here this evening. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great, great first game here for the entire local community to see the defending national champs. Tigers and the Bobcats coming up next. RCC Tigers football on Riverside TV. The Riverside County Transportation Commission has partnered with California Operation Lifesaver to educate Riverside County residents about how to be safe around trains and railroad tracks. Here are three safety facts you need to know. First, trespassing on train tracks is not only dangerous and can lead to serious injury, it is also illegal. Second, you may not always be able to hear a train coming, which is why it's important to always stay off and away from tracks. And finally, it can take a train up to a mile to come to a complete stop. If an object or person is on the tracks and the train can't stop in time, unfortunately, a collision may occur. Now that you're the expert, you can help us spread the word by sharing these important safety messages with your friends and family. We thank you for practicing rail safety. Connor Grace tees it up for Saddleback. Back deep for RCC, Dean Connors and Lauren Starks about to get underway. Home opener, Grace booms it. Fielded at the three by Starks. Fighting at the 25. Lurch forward to the 26. And that's where RCC starts it out, Jeffrey. I'll tell you what, very excited. It's been, it seems like it's been 18 months. <laughs> Good to be back here at RCC Wheelock Stadium. Great to be back with you, Gazals. We're calling the first game here of the national champions, defending national champions. Familiar face leads the Tigers out onto the field. It's Bud Burney. He's the freshman from Riverside Poly. He's at the controls, first and 10 from the 26 for RCC. The give to Kinslow. Kinslow dancing and is ridden down in the middle of the defense. Nice play by Sean Owens. Owens, the sophomore out of Newport Beach, Corona Del Mar High School, makes the tackle. Four-yard pickup to the 30-yard line, second and six for RCC. Great to see Bud Burney. was a great two-sport athlete at Riverside Poly High School. Bernie gives to Kinslow, and this time maybe a yard diving for maybe a yard and a half. Hernandez in on the hit for Saddleback, third and manageable coming up. Reggie Retzlaff to the top of your screen. In the far slot, Ty Moore, he's the freshman out of Desert Pines in Vegas. Another give. Up to about the 33, Kinslow with the carry. Fourth down coming up, needed to get over the 35 for the first down. So not a throw in that first series. Well, we talked about in the open that offensive line, the big boys up front, Anthony LaFrance, Ed Riley, Tristan Hayes, Alan Rennie, Kyle Scott. Ricardo Chavez on to kick. He'll punt it away for RCC. Turns over. Will bounce inside the 10, having trouble with it, and down he goes. 
That was James McDonald getting all turned around by the punt by Chavez. Another thing Tom Kraft told me when we spoke this week, he thinks Ricardo Chavez might be one of the best kickers ever to come through RCC. Well, you know how much I love those kickers, and when, when I hear that from a guy, a legend like Tom Kraft, man, you got to like it. But what a great defensive play by the special teams getting after it so quickly. That will be, I think, recorded as a 62-yard kick and the return back to the one-yard line. And Saddleback trots out their offense just in the shadow of their goalpost at the controls for the Bobcats. Drew Nash. Nash played at South Torrance High in that Pioneer League. And here's the give. This could be trouble. See where they mark his progress. Looks like they gave it to him at the one. Andrew Wimmer got back to the one-yard line. Wimmer had a big game yesterday. His first carry from scrimmage against Glendale was a game saddleback. Jeff won 58 to 12. He went 73 yards. Holy cow. That's moving. Wimmer from South Jordan, Utah, started his career at Mesa College, but here at saddleback playing for the Bobcats. Here's the throw in and out and dropped. Intended receiver, Yasir Berry. Berry, a sophomore from Montvale, New Jersey, St. Joseph's Prep, comes to Saddleback from Fairfield, Connecticut, where he played a year for Sacred Heart. You know, watching this, you know, Saddleback's looking directly into the sun here. Well, they deferred, so they chose which direction they're going in. I don't know if they chose correctly. Third down and ten coming up. So three and out for RCC. Let's see if the defense can get off the field here. Split out to the top of your screen, Samuel Hicks for Saddleback. Here's the throw, and this is complete to Berry for the first down. On the coverage there for RCC is DeMonte Peoples, the sophomore out of Narbonne. First down, the sticks move up for Saddleback. I'll tell you what, though, he telegraphed that pass. We knew exactly where it was going, but Really good route running that stop and come back there by the receiver. First and 10, line is the 13. Wimmer running right. Runs right into Talib Salahuddin, the freshman from Chaminade High School. He's a Calabasas product. Coach Kraft really high on him as well. He loves both defensive ends, meaning Salahuddin on one side, and Rayshon Gilmore on the other thinks to be the best young set of ends in the league. One yard on the play up to the 14, second and nine for Saddleback. Wimmer with the little stutter, stutter step doesn't get him much. He'll cross over the 15 to the 16, a couple of yards on the play. Salahuddin also getting up from the bottom of the pile along with Alex Oyewale, Oyewale, a sophomore from Vista Murrieta, helping out on the tackle. Third down situation. Saddleback already one for one on third down conversions. Throw to the outside. That's complete to Hicks. Hicks does the toe tap. Can't quite get the first down. Nice play there. They just... The timing was a little off on that screen. Nathan Bolton made the tackle ultimately for RCC, and the punt team comes out for Saddleback. This is Dylan Widner. Widner, the freshman from Mission Viejo, California. Two punts in the first game, 46 and 38 yards. That's a shocker. Saddleback put up 58 points. They only had to punt twice. <laughs> Ty Moore standing at the 40-yard line of RCC. And nearly blocked, a low line drive kick skips down at the 40 and takes the saddleback bounce. It'll roll dead at about the 31 yard line. So a 49 yard kick, no return. Coming back the other way, RCC will start at the 31 yard line. So a first down for saddleback, but not much more. They got out to the 20 yard line. Yeah, just that one pass really was the only thing that solidified them from being a safety was the one pass. Let's see if Riverside now can rebound here. Let's see if they go to the air at all. So we'll see two quarterbacks, maybe three today. Here's Bernie going to the air. Complete to the 35-yard line, nominal gain. That's Jamal Houston. Houston, the sophomore 
out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was a commitment to Colorado State out of high school. Very highly recruited. He's here with Coach Kraft. Five-yard pickup on first down. So call it the 37. It'll be a second and four from Bernie to Houston. Kinslow, the lone setback. Top of your screen is Juwan J.J. Tucker. Bernie looking for Houston. He hauls it in. Did he stay in bounds? And they say he did. The ball complete to the 36-yard line. 27-yard pickup. Great job by Bud Bernie dropping it over the shoulder of Jamal Houston. Well, Bernie had, Bernie had a couple looks here. He had uh, Ty Moore open right down, right down the middle of the field, but hit a perfect strike down the sideline there. Two by two for RCC, first and ten. Play action. Bernie looking for the home run to Houston, incomplete. Running with him in coverage was Corvin Fagans for Saddleback, incomplete second and ten. After the completion down the field, Tom Kraft goes for a shot to the end zone, Jeff. That's nice to see. That's the Tom Kraft we like to see. Maybe he just fooled everybody. I mean, he's just talking about the defense, and we're, we're oh. talking. We, he, he spoke. We spoke for about forty-five minutes on Wednesday, and he's just going on and on. I love our offensive line. I love our depth. Maybe he faked me out. Yeah, I think he did. Two by two, he is crafty. Bernie throwing over the middle into double coverage, incomplete, deflected by Timothy Jones. Jones, the sophomore from Sierra Vista, Arizona, also in on the coverage was Isaiah Sierra. A couple Arizona kids. He said double coverage. It was triple coverage. But I like the, the you know, being aggressive. Don't, don't be a gunslinger out there, young fella. Marquis Ashley in the far slot to the top of your screen, J.J. Tucker. Now here's Kinslow. It's an empty set. Bernie throwing. He's got a man. Overthrown, incomplete. The man down the field was Ty Moore. On the coverage for Saddleback was James McDonald. Brings up fourth down. Great, perfect call, though, I think. Just a little overthrown. That might be a little, first, you know, home. first time he's played in front of the home crowd. And the big boys up front doing a great job in terms of protection. Anthony LaFrance, Tristan Reyes, Ed Riley, Alan Rennie, Kyle Scott on the pass block there, and they're going to go for a field goal. This is a 53-yard field goal for Ricardo Chavez. Hit a 40-yarder last week at Long Beach. He was hitting him from 45, and that one is good. Chavez booms it through, and a 3 to nothing lead for RCC was a soccer player in high school. He was a Valley View kid, Jeff. And in 2016, when they won the state championship, he wasn't even the starting kicker. He only made seven PATs, but he boomed that one right there. Get out of here. That was an amazing. That reminded me of the old days when I was a young boy as a ball boy. Uh, Frank Corral kicking here. And then up exciting. at UCLA and then with the Rams. Yeah, you know, I have, I, look, I have goosebumps. That was, a, that was, you know, I love the kickers. Now, a man once told me, and it was Jeff Gorham, guys, Frank Corral used to kick him out of the stadium. He used here. to kick him out of the stadium. You know, as, as a kid, when, and especially when he was at Norda Vista High School, Norda Vista used to play their games here at RCC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the little guy in the back that would try to catch his, his ticks, <laughs> but he would kick it over the fence. And there wasn't, there wasn't a gate up there at the time that was open, so we had to go all the way around. And, but he would kick it off both sides. Okay, Ricardo. So you think it's a big deal making 53-yard kicks? Well, Jeff Gorham's going to raise you to Frank Corral. Oh, that was incredible. That's impressive. I mean, that's a weapon. Uh, we, you and I talk about that all the time. Every game we cover, we talk about the special teams and the kickers. And when you have a guy like that, you can win single-handedly win ball games. Samuel Hicks deep to return the kickoff, along with Jamari Farrell. And no need. Ball comes out to the 20. I mean, and that's what we talk about. And, you know, Chavez also punts. So we saw him punt earlier, and now we saw him not only make a 53-yard field goal, but a touchback. And, again, a good kicker can be such a weapon for a team. Especially, you know, if, you're, if your offense isn't generating any kind of points, but your defense is, been, is stellar, he can win ball games for you. So, correction, it comes out to the 25, and that's where Saddleback starts. 
Three to nothing, RCC. First and 10 from the 25. New quarterback in and mishandles the snap, gets through the first tackle, but the loss will be back to the 22 yard line. Nicholas Hill in at quarterback for Saddleback. Hill replaces Drew Nash, who was out for the first series. He went to Beckman High School. Irvine product went to Beckman. Beckman. Option. Hill keeps. Salahuddin wants to welcome him. A couple of yards over the 25 to the 26, third down. I saw Salahuddin running around prior to uh, putting on a uniform. He's a, he's a beast of a human. Salahuddin, the freshman from Calabasas, Chaminade High School product, though. Third and eight coming up. Nicholas Hill in at quarterback for Saddleback. No, that, he's ba back, and that's a completion to the tight end, Bowden Groen, the Groen. That was Nash back at quarterback throwing to Groen, the freshman out of modern day, and a first down as Saddleback moves the sticks. That is the one wrinkle in Terry Crabb's offense from when Mark McElroy ran the team. McElroy ran kind of that spread. The tight end is back. I love at tight end. Sa at Saddleback, first and 10, ball to the 39. 13 yard gain. Wimmer with the carry. Breaks the first line of defense and then surges up to the 45. Six yard pickup on the play. Noah Purcell getting in on that hit for RCC. Second and four from the 45 for Saddleback. Play action. Nash rolling, throwing, and it's complete. Finds Groen again. Making the tackle was DeMarco Moore, the freshman out of Pasadena, Arcadia High. About a three-yard pickup on the play. Second, or check that, third and two. I like that play. Groen went across. He was actually going to set a, a hit on the defensive end. He didn't move, so ran that little out pattern. Perfect play. Kalen Coates to the top of your screen. You see her buried to the bottom of your screen for Saddleback. Here's Groen in motion, the tight end for the Bobcats. Wimmer cut down. Thought he was going to have the first down, but good pursuit there. Moore there for the hit. He got help from Alex Oyawale. Yeah, Moore grabbed him by the ankles, pulled him back. And here comes the punt team. They don't have a kicker that can kick from here. Yeah, Connor Grace has pretty good. He made a 25-yard field goal, but yeah. <laughs> He's not going to make a 60-yarder, Jeff. <laughs> now, now, you're setting the bar way too high. This Frank Corral <laughs> stuff. Dylan Widner in to punt it away for a saddleback. Standing at the 20-yard line of RCC is Ty Moore. Ground ball scooped up at about the 18 by Moore. And Moore up to the 26-yard line. So a 35-yard kick, about a 7-yard return. And that's where RCC tees it up. So Bernie back out for the third series. They had a field goal the last time out. They went three and out the first time. And if nothing else, they've been giving him time to throw, Jeff. They have. I mean, he's. you look at the great offenses in the Division One level, Play action. Bernie pulls it down. He's looking down the field. He's got a man, and it's complete. Inside the 20-yard line, they flip the field. Marquise Ashley, the freshman out of Norco, stretches the field to the 16-yard line. 57-yard completion from a couple of local guys. Bernie to Marquise Ashley. You know, and talking about, you know, he's got all the time in the world in the pocket. You look at teams, Alabama, you know, Clemson, those quarterbacks have all the time in the world. That's why they're so good. Bernie, untouched, throws a perfect strike down the middle of the field. Under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Red zone opportunity for RCC. That's the give to Dean Connors. Connors from Murrieta Valley High School. Surges forward inside the 15 to the 14, about three yards on the play. Hiram DeFreeze with the tackle, the freshman from Honolulu 
Hiram's family, great football lineage. I believe it's his grandfather. There's a gentleman named Hiram DeFreeze who in the 90s was an assistant coach for Bruce Rollins at Modern Day, used to fly in from Honolulu for the weekends to coach the Modern Day Monarchs. Second and seven. Here's Connors. Finds some space. Spins inside the five, and he's pulled down there. We'll get to the two-yard line. 12-yard pickup for Dean Connors. And watch Connors, though. He takes a hit and immediately does a reverse pivot. Perfect play. James McDonald was the first man there, and then some buddies showed up. Watch Retzloff to the top of your screen right now for RCC. Second down from the two. Connors with the pivot, but he, down he goes. Isaiah Sierra is there for the tackle, but nice job by Jordan Deuson. Deuson, the sophomore out of Oceanside, with the contain. Watch it initially. He's trying to change direction as Connors. Watch Deuson, 57, kind of contains him there, and then it's cleaned up by Sierra. So player down on the play. We have a timeout on the field. And the offense working for RCC, I know they had the initial three and out, but I, I, I'm buying what Tom Kraft was talking about with the big boys up front, Jeffrey. I'm telling you, uh, Bud Bernie has yet to be even grazed. He's out there able to just pick his reads. And, man, big, big jumbo line. Hey. You know what? We need to talk about water rebates, and in the city of Riverside, we have water efficiency has become a way of life in Southern California, and Riverside Public Utilities offers a variety of rebates to help customers lower their water use and save money. Simple changes can make a huge difference. Visit RiversidePublicUtilities.com backslash rebates to learn more. The player down looks like Kyle Scott. Scott's a freshman from Temescal Canyon, Lake Elsinore area, played both football and basketball at Temescal Canyon, played football for our buddy Phil Cohen. Phil Cohen's still the head coach over there at Temescal. I just want to know what he played in basketball, power forward? Yeah, he was a five or four oh, or a five. Big yeah. five, large five. He could play for Phil Matthews out here with the men's team. I'm sure Phil Matthews has inquired about it <laughs> if he played for Temescal, man. Two-yard loss on the play. More in motion. They'll give instead to Connors. Connors has, is bottled up as he surges towards the two-yard line. Owens was the first man there. Coming across, helping out. Timothy Jones was there as well. No, I was wrong. That's James McDonald was the first guy there. Wow. McDonald got down low. I was looking up high. Thanks for the replay. So here's Retzlaff to the top of your screen. Devin, get your way to the bottom of your screen. In the near slot is Ty Moore. In the far slot, Marquise Ashley. Connors the tailback. Play clock runs out, and it'll back it off five yards. It'll be a third and seven. So third down coming up now. Chavez has already hit from 53, so you got three points in your back pocket, Jeff. But got to go for the score. You're in the red zone. You want seven, man. Last last year in the red zone, they were a 79% team, touchdown 66% of the time. Bernie on third down, flips it into the end zone, nearly an acrobatic interception, just burns the down. Chasing him was Shane Robertson, the freshman from South Orange County out of San Juan Hills High. He's also a, b a baseball player as well as a football player at San Juan Hills. And here comes Ricardo Chavez. Corvin Fegans nearly came up with the interception on the pylon. Fegans also a Honolulu product, but he goes... He's from St. Louis High School. Chavez out of the hold of James Odom. And that's just shooting fish in a barrel for him. I mean, he already made a 53-yarder. He scoffs at that one. You know, you know. I'm going to say this. It sounds really silly. But, you know, people watch, they watch movies like Forrest Gump and they cry, right? Mm -hmm. I watch Kickers and I cry. 
Really? I do. I, it makes me happy. It's a, it's it's a it's good, a happy good cry. Ki- well, good a kickers, good, right? Yeah, good kickers. A good, that's like a <laughs> yeah. notebook cry. <laughs> Watching right. a bad kicker yeah. is like a disaster yeah, cry, that's true, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah, I don't cry in movies. I only cry when I see kickers kick. Just a, a, like it's an art form, my friend. Yeah, it's interesting. It is. You know, we joke about it, but it's it's a skill. It, it is. How many college games do you watch that are decided by kickers now? So many are decided by kickers. And, you know, our friends who maybe uh, like to put uh, some speculation in in the desert, let's just say. Man, those guys always are talking about kickers. That's true. Not you and I. No. Other people that we know. So Ricardo Chavez tees it up. Deep for saddleback Darius Maxwell. And Wimber. This is Maxwell backing off. It's over his head. Another touchback. So, so far, Ricardo Chavez, he's the star tonight. Two field goals, a punt, two ki- two kicks into the end zone. Can you, do they have a, a J.C. Heisman Trophy winner right there? He could be our guy. Definitely a showcase game. If you're RCC, obviously you're happy you got the lead, but... Keep in mind, this Saddleback team last week, they rolled up 544 yards, and they put 58 points on the board against Glendale, and they can they can do it in a hurry. It was a close game early. Saddleback, as I mentioned, they scored on the first play from scrimmage, 73-yard run by Andrew Wimmer, but then Glendale bounced back. It was a 14-6 game, and then the Bobcats just ran away with it. Nash to throw, complete to the outside to Jamari Farrell. Incomplete, excuse me. Farrell last week had 40 yards on seven carries and a touchdown. Mission Viejo High School product, second and 10 coming up. That's a pretty good high school program. Yes, here, buried to the near side, near slot, Samuel Hicks. Farrell is the tail, or is the setback. False start. Saddleback running the pistol. Mentioned Kerry Crabb, the first-year head coach for the Bobcats. He was on Mark McElroy's staff for 15 years. He himself a Saddleback grad, and he's worked on both sides of the ball in offense and defense. So mark off the penalty, and it's second and 15. Barry in the near slot, or excuse me, Hicks in the near slot. Barry split out to the near side. Here's the throw. That's complete to Coates. Coates over the 30, down at the 33-yard line. First man there to make the tackle for RCC, DeMonte Peoples. So a 14, we call it a 13-yard pickup. The Bobcats throwing a lot of cross-field patterns here. Got good receivers. Coates to the top of your screen. Then right next to him is Zachary Roebuck. Here comes Hicks in motion. Back to throw. Nash gets away. Makes some yardage on his own. About five yards on the scramble. Enough for a first down. He'll get up to 38 and up move the sticks. Got something out of nothing there. Great defense by Riverside. Missed, Missed him there, but... And keep him from throwing the ball down the field. But smart play, though, from the young quarterback. Last week, RCC defensively, they were able to control the line of scrimmage and get pressure with three. Early going, but not quite working out yet. Saddleback seems to be up to the challenge. Here's the give to Jamari Farrell dancing. He'll traverse over the 40-yard line, maybe three yards on that play. Farrell was a big-time player in high school for Chad Johnson at Mission Viejo, but he broke his leg, his... Uh, sophomore year had a couple of injuries that's why he's had to go to the JC group you can see the moves he's very shifty stays very low to the ground and he's very tough to bring down they gave him two marked at the 40 second and eight Nash right in trouble gets rid of it bearing down on him for RCC 
It's like he turned the corner, and there was Rayshon Gilmore standing. And we talked earlier how much Coach Kraft likes Rayshon Gilmore, and this is probably why. Just rangy, athletic. Look at him right there. Doesn't over-pursue. Yeah, they sent that fourth. Started with three, ran that four in. So Coach to the top of your screen. Hicks right next to him and Roebuck to his left. Buried to the bottom of the screen for Saddleback. Third down. Nash throws. Com well, in and out of the hands of Samuel Hicks. I was ready to give him the completion. Hicks incomplete. Fourth down. Yeah, there were four Tigers right there. Another punt for Saddleback. I believe this is already the third punt for the for the uh, Bobcats. They only punted twice all last week against Glendale. Ty Moore stands at the 30-yard line to receive the kick. Widmer boots it at the 25 is Moore. Up to the 40, flag on the play, up to the 40-yard line. So a 15-yard return. It's a 35-yard kick and a 15-yard return, but let's sort out the laundry, Jeffrey. Yeah, there were two flags at two different spots. It's going to be against Riverside, I believe. So the penalty will take it back just outside the 30-yard line. So J.J. Tucker to the bottom of your screen, just to his left is Jamal Houston, and that's Ty Moore next to him. Instead, the give. Running up, surging up to the 34 is Connors. Let's see where they mark it. They'll mark the 35, so four-yard pickup on the play for RCC. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. I'm impressed though with Saddleback. They're not getting pushed around as much as I thought they would. Instead, that was Lawrence Starks on the carry. So Starks with four yards. Running back by committee for RCC. <laughs> Second down, Starks again. Not so lucky this time. Riding over the top of him to make the tackle for Saddleback was Angelo Rooks. Rooks, and then he got some help. There was a hit that came in. Now watch this. Some people felt this was a helmet-to-helmet, -helmet, but Rooks kind of already had him. I believe that's Isaiah Sierra who got in there to try to help out. And yeah, hit, hit the shoulder pad. Third and five from the 36. Flag comes in. Who jumped? Who drew somebody off? The officials will caucus behind the Tigers. Bud Bernie trying to listen in what's going on. So that was called on RCC. Jamal Houston lined up offside. End of the first quarter with a 6-0 RCC lead. So the title defense begins with a 6-0 first quarter lead. The star of the first quarter was our friend Ricardo Chavez. Jeff. Ricardo Chavez already has our, our uh, MVP of this game so far. But, hey, I have a question for you, Gazal. Sure. You know, you got a house, and I've got three kids and, and dogs and everything. i got a lot of trash in my house. Mm -hmm. and, and the city of Riverside right now, they're picking up all the trash. Caltrans is partnering with the city of Riverside to collect the public's trash and one unwanted items on Saturday, September 25th from 9 to 3. Please, no hazardous waste, paint, solvents, batteries, home remodel or demo waste, electronics, flammables, petroleum products, aerosols, or compressed gases. None of those things you can throw away. Everything else you can. All loads must be tied 
or secured so they will or they will not be accepted. The event will be held at the Caltrans maintenance station located at 1091 Everton Place at Riverside, California, 92507. I got to get rid of so much of my stuff, but I have so many uh, compressed gases. Can't get rid of those things. The good people at Caltrans. <laughs> well, good news for RCC. Kyle Scott back on the field. He's back out to start the second quarter after the penalty. It's a third and nine. Bernie looking. Now in trouble. Trying to run with it. And maybe up to the line of scrimmage. Bernie tackled by Keegan Netherton. Netherton, the linebacker. For a saddleback, a freshman from Jay Sarah in South Orange County. A loss of one yard on the play. You know, Bud Bernie was the leading rusher in the game against Long Beach City for RCC, Jeff. He had 16 carries for 56 yards. He took a shot there. It looked like he got a need in the, the thigh. So James McDonald stands at the 35-yard line of saddleback awaiting for the punt from our friend Ricardo Chavez. Ricardo booms this one. And it bounces at about the 32. And backing off is McDonald. There's a discretion, the better part of Valor for him. It's going to roll inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. So a 56-yard kick for Chavez as it's dead at the 14. That's where Saddleback will start it off. Still the MVP of this game. So far. <laughs> a lot of time to play, though, Jeff. A lot of time to play. Always fun to be back out here at Wheelock State. It looks wonderful tonight. Oh, it's great. And we got a good night tonight, too. It's kind of cool. It feels like fall. Yeah. Football weather. We've been playing on Mars for the last month. It seems like it's been so darn hot. Here's the give to Wimmer. Runs ahead. Purcell was there. Wimmer up to about the 15-yard line. Nathan Bolton also helped out on the tackle there for RCC. So it gave him two yards to the 16, second and eight coming up. Back to throw. Complete to about the 22-yard line. Complete to Yassir Berry. Carlton Johnson from the Rancho Verde High on the coverage for RCC. First down is just about over the 24 to the 25. So they marked to the 21, so third down coming up. Jet sweep. This is Samuel Hicks. Can he turn the corner? He cannot. Kylan Ross steps up to make the play. One of the returning starters from that national championship defense. Got some help from Carter as well. Watch Ross fly in here. Bada bing, bada boom. And a fourth down. Ross did a great job there stringing that play out, Jeff. Yes, he did. So Moore at midfield. Widmer punt number four. And we're barely in the second quarter. Widmer boots it. Tracking back is Moore, and that, that'll take a saddleback bounce. That's going to look good on the stat sheet. That'll roll dead at the 11-yard line. 69-yard punt flips the field. He might be their MVP. <laughs> if these guys are this good, how good are the D1 guys? I know. It's, these are two good teams right now. Yeah. Remember, they – I. They played in 2019, I believe it was the finale, the regular season finale at Saddleback. And RCC won rather decisively, and they rolled to the state title and were eventually dubbed national champions by J.C. Gridiron. Have they ranked second this year, correct? Yeah, they were in the, they were in the top five. So from the 11, 6 nothing RCC. And the play clock runs out. So 
So a five-yard mark-off on the delay of game on RCC puts the ball back on the six. Play action from Bernie. Eludes the rush down the field. Incomplete. No call there. It looked like he was he was grabbed. Ma Mason Young on the coverage. The freshman from Cottonwood, Utah. Ty Moore, the intended receiver. There was some there was some rumbling about that, but I, I like when there's a little hand let him play. I yeah, I let agree. him play. When I call it went and get us RCC, so people are upset, but I don't think either guy really gained an advantage on that play. Second and 15. Here's the completion to the outside. And how do you do? Gitchaway makes the catch. Stephen Gashikin makes the tackle. He's the freshman from Kamehameha, Hawaii. Pukalani High School. Couple of Hawaiians playing for Saddleback. Mahalo. Mahalo. What's the big high school that uh, in Hawaii? That well, there's Punahou the is a big one, and then St. Louis. You know, those, those are yes. kind of the two. St. Louis, Marcus Mariota played at St. Louis. Tua Tonga Viola played That's at St. Right. Louis. Third down coming up. Three-yard pickup on the play. Trips to the near side for RCC. See if they get the protection. Good blitz pickup by Kinslow. Moore turned around incomplete. Kyle Thomas was on the coverage there. Great job by Kinslow pick up, picking up the blitzer there. You know he learned that skill playing for our friend Matt Logan. That's right. At Centennial. The evil Empire. He's the only guy I know that embraces evil. Didn't they have it on the inside they of did. their collars a couple <laughs> years ago, Evil he, Empire? He gave me a shirt once that had it on okay. the inside of my collar as yeah. well. But they had it, yeah, on their, on their uniforms. It says the Evil Empire. So line is the nine, and this is be a good opportunity for Saddleback. Chavez to punt. This is Barry back to receive. Chavez with a good kick, a little short, running up and catching it is Barry. It'll be to the 35-yard line, so 29-yard kick unofficially and good field position for Saddleback. That's like seeing Bob Cousy miss a free throw. That's <laughs> but let's see the defense match it up. You ever see the movie Blue Chips? Of course. So the, no, there's a scene where he, he plays the athletic director, Bob Cousy, and he That's makes right. a bunch of free throws. That's right. <laughs> he was in that movie. That's First right. and ten from the 35. Nash throwing to the outside. It's complete to about the 30-yard line. That's complete to Yasir Berry, Carlton Johnson on the coverage. Well, they're shooting the scene where he makes all these free throws, and apparently he was really making them. Yeah. So they, the director told the camera, just keep rolling. I think he hit like 47 in a row before he missed. Five-yard pickup, make it second and five. Nash, pump fake. Under pressure, completes to Wimmer at the 33. Wimmer trying to get outside, which he does. Picks up the first down over the 35. Yeah, Blue Chips is living out in real life now, isn't it? It, seem, it seems seems tame now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> He's paying him a couple bucks, huh? so what? What's the quarterback at, at Alabama making? Like two million a year? In in uh, endorsements, right? Yeah, that's right. From the twenty-two, give up the middle. Was, Wimmer uh, trans, uh, traverses up to the eighteen four-yard pickup on the play. I was watching a football game today with my dad. I was, went over to his house and and he did say something funny. I go, hey, I go, Dad, that guy's making like two million a year, and he goes. Does he live in the dorms? There you go. If you're his roommate in the dorms, what you, can, I, can I borrow a couple bucks? Second and six from the 18. Looking at Barry incomplete and out of his hands. Now, I'll say this. Nash was looking at him the whole way. Yes, he so was. So he was open. That was part of it. But sometimes you do that and you invite the jumping of the roots. Yeah, he got past he got past Johnson, just couldn't hold on to it. Third down coming up. 
throw might have been a little behind him, but you know. I thought Jalen Carter was going to jump that gap there, and he didn't see it go whiz right by him. Barry in motion. Nash throws. Complete. Down inside the five yard line with the completion. Zachary Roebuck, the freshman from Illinois. Graduate of Rich Central High School. They'll call it down at the three yard line, a 15 yard pickup, first and goal. Bringing the goal line defense, the big fellas. Double tight set. Here's the give. Oh, man. Holy smokes. Big hit from Noah Purcell. That was like the scene in Godfather 2 where Danny Ayala says, Michael Corleone says hello. Wow, look at this right here. Noah he Purcell, was... hello. It looked like he was hitting the sled. And Thodius Ashley had the carry for Saddleback. Nash behind center. He'll throw. Chasing, throwing, tipped, incomplete. Intended for Bowden growing in the corner of the end zone. Purcell was over there, too. Get another look at the play, Jeff. Oh, man, I mean, great blocks. I mean, it's just a right there, a little low, but I like how Riverside, though, doesn't give up on the play. It's tipped, and everybody's still trying to get it. That's a good play. Great play. That's a great play on the outside. Nathan Bolton making the play for the Tigers. Third down. Nash, Salahuddin in pursuit. Talib Salahuddin makes the play at the 10. Fourth down coming up. That's just a true athlete right there. Look at him yeah. run. That, that's the scary part. You know, that's the... You know, that's the Miami in the in the 80s when Jimmy Johnson took all these running backs and made them into that's linebackers. Right. You know, they're big, they're big athletic guys, and man, I gotta run away from them on defense now. Oh. So here's a field goal attempt coming up. Connor Grace, the freshman from Crean Lutheran in Irvine. Hold is down, kick is up, and he sees Ricardo Chavez making all these field goals and goes, hey, I got a leg too, 27-yard field goal halves the lead for RCC. So Connor Grace, a 25-yard field goal last week. He adds a 27-yarder to his ledger, and it's a 6-3 ball game. So the deep, the punt by Widmer that flipped the field results in points for Saddleback as the defense holds, and then the short punt by the Tigers, and they get three on the board. I mean, how many points are these guys? I mean, the, the, the national championship team averaged them a zillion points. I mean, last year, so in 2019, Saddleback averaged 46 points a game, and RCC averaged nearly 50 points. <laughs> so these guys were throwing up 50s, 50 burgers every week, and now it's a 6-3 game. How times have changed. The kickers. Yeah, it's going to come down to a kicker. When was the last time we saw a game where there was no touchdowns? Just, wow. I don't uh, think we've seen one. Not at RCC. Never at RCC. <laughs> you have to go back to where when it turned into Polly turned into Rivers RCC. Might didn't we, didn't we have like a three nothing like Arlington? Didn't they play like a three nothing game a few years ago? High school. Yeah, game? but I fell asleep during that game, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't remember it. But yes, we did, I believe. So Grace booms it deep. Oh, that's fumble. That's a live football. Picks it up at the 10, 15. Gets to the outside to the 30. And over the 35, Lawrence Starks averts disaster. You heard a gasp from everybody in the crowd, including us a little bit. Man, what made something? So Starks scoops it up at the 7, about a 31-yard return to the 30, uh, 36. That's first and 10 for RCC. They lead it 6-3, to three, eight minutes to play in the second quarter. I'm Kazal Hassan. He's Jeff Gorham. That was a good play that he made to scoop it up because Juan Lua was bearing down. Sophomore from Palm Desert for Saddleback. First look at Walter Brooks to the top of your screen, the wide receiver. The give up the middle, our old friend Elijah Bennett, the sophomore from Claremont. 
surges over the 40-yard line or up to the 40, three-yard pickup there. From the 39, second and seven. Three-man front for Saddleback. James Odom in at quarterback. Launches it down the field, nearly caught. I believe that was Brooks on the back end. Instead, the intended receiver was Rashawn Lacey out of Esperanza in Orange County. Third and seven coming up. Didn't Esperanza, they beat Ramona in the CIF championship. 2019 That's championship. Right. So James Odom, the freshman, six foot three, out of Grossmont High School in the San Diego area, was a big time player in high school. Odom nearly picked. Intended receiver was JJ Tucker coming in and making the play. Brian Sanders for Saddleback. There's Sanders. Nearly comes up with it fourth down. We'll see Ricardo Chavez. So after the field goal, the defense holds for Saddleback. Yasir Berry on the 20-yard line of the Bobcats. Better kick from Chavez. And a fair catch called by Berry at the 25-yard line. So a 36-yard kick, no return. And Saddleback will start from the 25-yard line. Now, we're calling the Saddleback team the Bobcats. That's the new nickname. That's right. For many, for many years, they were the Gauchos. And in February of 2021, there was a, a movement to replace the mascot. And a vote came in May. And then on May 21st, they unveiled the new mascot, which was the Bobcats. So now Saddleback is the Bobcats, no longer the Gauchos. Remember, they used to have the G on the helmet, like yes. the old Green Bay Packers right. logo. And no longer. They now have an S, kind of like Stanford. The Bobcats. I saw a Bobcat once in my back door when I moved in my house. I wanted to eat my cat. At Stately Gorham Manor? Seriously? Yeah, there was a Bobcat back in my – I said, that's a large cat. That's not a real cat. That's a, that's a Bobcat. 21-yard line. Here's the run by Anthony. There's going to be Ashley. And Thodius Ashley is spun down over the 25 to the 26. Ashley from Fairfax High in Phoenix had six rushes last week for 29 yards, scored a touchdown. Sophomore at Mission Viejo, at uh, Saddleback in Mission Viejo. Second and six from the 27. Nash under pressure. Nash trying to buy time down the field, looking for the tight end, incomplete. Play on the defensive side. That's Oyewale. He was looking down the field. The receiver, Bryce Kreider, was the intended receiver. Bringing back the tight end is head coach Kerry Crabb. We've seen Bowden growing a little bit earlier, the tight end out of modern day. Under seven minutes to play here in the first half. Six to three. RCC leads third down situation. Nash, third and four, over the middle. In and out of the hands. He had it and he dropped it. Kylan Ross on the coverage. That was Kalen Coates, the sophomore out of De La Salle. Storied program in Northern California. Yeah, that definitely would have, would have been a touchdown. Coates last week had a 44-yard touchdown reception. Probably was thinking about that. Couldn't quite reel it in. Penalty decline by RCC, and the punt team comes on in the person of Dylan Widner for Saddleback. Rolandis Whitener will get our first look at him, our old friend from Arcadia High School. That's He'll right. return the punt. Didn't he have a great playoff game? We he saw did. him play he against did. Hillcrest. So back at the 34 of RCC is Rolandis Whitener Jr. Widener kicking. That's not Whitener, sorry. That was a one. It's a seven up to the 50-yard line on the return. Marquise Ashley out of Norco. So 
So Netherton with the tackle for Saddleback and good field position for RCC as we get to the end of the, uh, towards the end of the first half. Penalty going to be marked off though on RCC. Saddleback won the toss and deferred. They'll get the ball to start the second half as Tom Kraft calls the troops together. Coach Kraft's looking. I think the, I think the uh, 18 months off did him well. Look at him, looking good. Nice and relaxed. He won't be relaxed much longer. No, no, he's. Come on, let's be honest. Do you really think he's relaxed? I do. Odom with the give. This is Connors. Finally brought down at the 30-yard line. Timothy Jones on the tackle. Got a little help from Owens. Four-yard pickup. Connors in motion, empty set. Odom with a little dump off to Connors. Eludes the first tackle, trying to get outside to the 40, outside of the 45, into Saddleback territory, and he sidles out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Check that 46-yard line. 24-yard pickup on the little swing pass from Odom to Connors. Connors, the, uh, the favorite target. Nice play getting outside there. And then it's just a foot race to get out of bounds. Just how many yards he got? 24 yards on that carry. From the 46 of Saddleback. Throw to the numbers, a little bit high over Devin Gitchaway, incomplete. Got a little tap after the play, second and 10 coming up. National championship for RCC in 2019. Should note, the Bobcats have won three as well. Another dump off to Connors. 45, dives forward to the 40. So it'll be third and four coming up. Saddleback won in 85 and 92 under head coach Ken Swearingen. And then under Bill Cunerty in 96. Yeah, they rough, oh wow rough on the passer they he literally undercutted him on the throw and just threw him threw him for a loop literally so it went to the 40 the 15 yard mark off will take it to the 25 yard line of saddleback mentioning coach Cunerty, he passed away last fall passed away in october of 2020 longtime fixture in south orange county first and 10 from the 25 to the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Retzlaff. And Retzlaff slow to get up. Retzlaff, a very good high school player. Corona Centennial. Actually, he was a quarterback at Claremont before he transferred. He's a good friend of uh, the David Patrick family. He's, it was a came in to be a quarterback, ended up being a playmaker. Nonetheless, for Centennial, but talking about uh, Coach Cunerty, you know, passed away in October. He was only the coach, I believe, for three or four years. He won that national championship, had to retire for health reasons, but then kind of ended up becoming. He was a local broadcaster down in South Orange County. Worked with one of my mentors, Kevin Turner, and then he was also the he in, he started the uh, the West Coast Quarterback School, along with the late Jim Fossil who was the head coach of the Giants for some yeah. years. And then, you know, if you watched Hard Knocks this year, Coach Fossil's son, John Fossil, is on the staff of the Dallas Cowboys That's with right. Mike McCarthy. So Coach Kennedy, again, just such a such a fixture in South Orange County in the football community. I'm just always willing to help anybody and very tied closely to Saddleback College for many years. He coached golf there as well. They have a great golf facility on the campus at Saddleback. They do. They do. So it'll be second and 10 from the 25. Odom into the air. Complete inside the 20-yard line. That's J.J. Tucker, the freshman from Narbonne in L.A. Had two 
catches last week against Long Beach City College. He started his career at Oregon, Jeff. Really? It was a red shirt in 2018 for the Ducks. Seven yard pickup, they mark it to the 18. I just like that he calls himself JJ. Hey, Juwan JJ Tucker. That's just what Coach Kraft called him. I shouldn't say. I don't know if he calls himself that, but Coach Kraft is mentioned. He, is he Kid Dynamite? I'm waiting to drop a Kid Dynamite. You know it. <laughs> Connors in the backfield with James Odom in the second quarterback of the evening for RCC. Odom's got time. Now he'll step up and run and from goes down at the 20. That heat-seeking missile from behind Netherton all over the place. Keegan Netherton almost took him to the nether world with that hit. Jay Serra, San Juan Capistrano. You know, they're playing an NCAA Division I basketball tournament at Jay Serra this year around Thanksgiving. They are. They are. Isn't our old friend, uh, one of the former UCR assistant coaches, is the head basketball coach at Jay Sarah? Justin Bell, I believe he's at Santa Margarita. No, there's another guy. Oh. The guy, oh, Keith Wilkinson. Keith Wilkinson. That's right. I knew you'd know his name. Maybe that's how they did it. Yeah, maybe that's how they worked it out. So now the penalty against RCC, the 15-yard mark off back to the 36. Oh, he's going to do it again. Oh. So this would be a 53-yarder in the other direction for Chavez. Give me the popcorn. This is great. Now, Saddleback did block two kicks last week. They were both PATs. He's got the distance. Or does he? Yes. Hey. Two 50-plus yard field goals for Ricardo Chavez today. 53 to one end of the stadium, 54 to the other end of the stadium. Eat your heart out, Frank Corral. Oh, man, Frank Corral. Who? who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I have tears coming out of my face right now. That was, this is NFL stuff right here. Well, I'll tell you what, he's putting some good film off his Chavez. Holy smokes. The, you know, the Inland Empire in the last, I don't know, decade, maybe two decades, yeah. has really become a hotbed with the with the emergence of all these teams that have started to play against, you know, all of Southern California as far as recruiting ground for for, for Division One and, you know, beyond. And I would guess, I mean, listen, it's one game, right? You know, the old, what's the old Parcells run? Don't put him in Canton just yet, but... I'm I'm a if, if I'm a college coach, I'm at least putting Chavez on my list, right? Isn't he's he a got, guy you watch? He's the, on the top of the list, for God's sakes. He's my new favorite player. I'm going to go buy his jersey and see if they got it in the student store. I'm all about number 10 now. Here's the return for Saddleback. This is Darius Maxwell. And Maxwell up to the 25-yard line. And there's going to be a hold, looks like. So Maxwell up to the 25, flag on the play, as you heard Jeff say. I believe that was Desi Gonzalez on the... I might have been a block in the back. That's usually on a, on a, on a kick, usually. There it is. So 4-12 to play in the first half. It's been a battle of the place kickers so far. Connor Grace with the three for Saddleback. Ricardo Chavez with nine for RCC. Both defenses standing up against each other. This is a Gaucho team. I said it. This is a Bobcats team that put up 58 points last week, Jeff. So from the 10... Nass looking downfield, incomplete. Yasir Berry, the intended receiver, Jalen Carter, the freshman out of Rancho Cucamonga High there on the coverage. You see C.J. Stroud earlier today playing for Ohio State? I did. Tulsa. All these Inland Empire quarterbacks littered all through the and NCAA. Our guy Tanner McKee last week took care, uh, had the uh, coach at USC fired. 
<laughs> Second down, Nash in trouble and goes down at the 15-yard line, making the play for RCC, Elton Adigwu. Adigwu, the sophomore out of Etiwanda High. Third down from the 16. First down up to about the 20. That's the line to get. Nash throwing complete. That's the first down. Complete to Andrew Wimmer. Kind of been his safety net. We haven't had... I don't see the, the uh, cannon here tonight. That's right. You don't. No, we, and it's only usually on touchdown, so maybe it's so somewhere. They, they marked him out at the 19. He's short of the first down. Yeah. A timeout called by head coach Kerry Crabb. First season as the head coach. He's been on the staff for 15 years. Mark McElroy has been the head man since 1999. He stepped aside after the 2019 season. Very successful junior college head coach. Started his career as a head. He was a high school coach at San Clemente. And he implemented an offense that's, you know, pretty common now, basically the spread, but they called it the fly. That's right. You were telling me. It was me so that. cool. And his big, you know, kind of made his bones. He had a big win against Modern Day in 1995. Modern Day had won in 94. They'd won the CIF. And I think even then, it was back when USA Today did a high, did a high school poll, mm -hmm. and they were the number one USA Today team. And they'd won, I think, 20-some games in a row. And they went to San Clemente, and San Clemente knocked them off. That was back when they played in the old South Coast League with a bunch of so South Orange County schools. And they called it the Fly? The Fly. And then Trevor Inslee was the guy who played later at Nevada, and then he was in the NFL for a minute with the Colts. I think he got to play with Peyton Manning. I'm not, I'm not sure. The timetable might be a little bit off. Fourth down coming up from the 18. So Saddleback exhausts their second timeout here as we have 3.23 to play in the second quarter. It's 9-3 lead for RCC. It's been a battle of the place kickers. I love it. I do like to see guys scoring touchdowns, though. But I do like place kickers. A lot of football to play. Marquise Ashley deep for RCC. Dylan Widner to punt it away. Widner is earning his scholarship today, or his money today. Shanks it. Hits at the 28 and bounces out of bounds. They mark it at the 32. So call it a 14-yard kick unofficially. And that's where RCC will get a chance. Well, you wanted a touchdown, Jeff? Here could here's, be here's, right an, here. here's an opportunity for one is Tom Kraft, the head coach for RCC, getting into it. Wow. So a flag comes in, and there were too many men on the field. Illegal substitution for RCC. That's, I was wondering why Coach Kraft was getting heated here. And they're going to mark it. It's a five-yard penalty, which gives Saddleback a first down. Wow. So mark the ball up to the 23-yard line for Saddleback, and they'll tee it up again on offense. Jeremy Cooper split out to the near side, and the near slot for Saddleback is Zachary Roebuck. Nash on the option. Pitch to Wimmer. Up to the 30-yard line. Moorer in on the tackle for RCC. Purcell. Purcell was there. And here's the dump off to Wimmer. And down he goes at the 30. 
And they're going to throw it. There's the penalty flag. Too many guys in the field. They just called it. Another late call. There's one, isn't there, isn't the back judge, we were joking about the back judge last week. Yeah. I believe it's the back judge's job to count the players. And if there's a violation, his, the flag comes out from him. Now it's early. Now remember, it's been a weird kind of off season for RCC. They had two three-week pauses one in the spring and one in the summer. In fact, when they played Long Beach City that first game, Jeff, they only had nine days of practice, wow. full practice before that first game because of a couple of stoppages and some issues. And they weren't allowed on campus for the longest time yeah. as well. Empty set as Wimmer spins out in motion. Nash to throw and down he goes. Coming up and making the play, Cade Miller. Miller out of Diamond Ranch. Outside linebacker for RCC. Sacks Nash for a big loss back inside the 30-yard line. Nice pressure coming from Randall Turner. Turner out of Norco, but then there's the finish by Cade Miller. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Clock moves. Picked off. DeMarco Moore, 10-5, touchdown Tigers. Pick six for DeMarco Moore, the freshman from Arcadia High. Had four tackles last week, really stepping up into his role. Some petty larceny there, six points for the Tigers. Great play. He jumped the gap and knew exactly where he was going. He was going directly to the house, but no flags on the play here. No, no, there's... There is a flag. About a 37-yard interception return from DeMarco Moore. It was before the game. We were down on the field doing our open, Jeff. And I saw there was just a very quiet man sitting there on the sideline. It was RCC defensive coordinator James Cook, who we've talked about a lot over the years. And I just went over to Cook and I said, Coach, I just want to let you know, I know all the headlines here about how many points they score, and rightly so, but I love watching your defense play because he's done such a masterful yeah, job a last job. year. And uh, obviously it goes there as well as defense picks up the team for the first touchdown of the game. And Chavez splits the uprights to make it 16-3. So how about this? Three field goals and a defensive touchdown, just like you drew it up, Jeff Gore. Exactly. Man, alive. Both, neither one of these teams can get it going offensively, but both defenses have been, both defenses have been phenomenal in this game. You know, Tom Kraft, when we spoke, pointed out to me, he goes, hey, if we can get pressure with three, we're in pretty good shape yeah. because he, li he likes his secondary. They're, they're deep, you know, linebackers, and set, they're pretty deep. They got 10, 12 guys that they can kind of interchange back there. And he mentioned DeMarco Moore. He said, you know, he really wasn't a guy we expected to step up like he did, but he has. That's why he's starting. So Samuel Hicks... And Jamari Farrell back deep for Saddleback as Chavez tees it up. This is returnable from the eight. This is Farrell trying to turn the corner about the 30-yard line. And how about Chavez being the one? Does he bump him out? That bumps him out. There's Arby Nio, so it wasn't the kicker. Lovewin Don Willis, the freshman from Narbonne, bumps him out at the 38-yard line, and that's where Saddleback will start with 91 ticks left in the first half. 
Nash gives to Wimber running left. Let's see Out of bounds. Let's see if they go up to the hurry up offense. Remember, they get the ball here in the second half. Right. Let's see if they go to a quick offense here. Salahu Dean late to get in. The throw, and what a hit there. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Bowden Groen, and a flag comes in. That was DeMarco Moore lighting him up. Yeah, they're going to call it a targeting, I believe. So even though Salahu Dean came in late, he's able to get a little bit of pressure and off the fingertips, and there's Moore with the play. Flag was thrown. Let's see what they do. They're still talking about it at the 40-yard line. 16-3, to three, RCC leads here. A minute 19 to play in the first half. So they're going to call targeting. Oh, that's an ejection. That's tough. Wow. If you want to go letter the law, Jeff, that's probably the right call. Did he go helmet to helmet? Because you're always going to call back. I don't know if there was any intention there, but, man, yeah. you lose the player the rest of the game. That's tough. That's tough. 15-yard mark off. They move to the RCC side of the field from the 44. Here's a little comeback screen, and Oyewale there for the hit up to the 44-yard line, right to the line of scrimmage. Yassir Berry on the reception for Saddleback. Second down coming up. One timeout left for the Bobcats as the clock ticks down under a minute to play. Nash steps up. Down he goes. I believe that was Purcell. Incomplete. Purcell with the pressure. Salahuddin also in there, but here's Purcell coming. He just got rid of it. Did Nash. Intended receiver in the area was Darius Maxwell so third down coming up Nash loads it up looking downfield incomplete a flag's going to come out Barry was running down the field with DeMonte Peoples and they're going to get a personal foul on RCC this could be another Injection here. They're gonna, it's going to be, see if it's a late hit or they're going to call targeting. Let's see. We can watch it here. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just a late hit. Late he's not, he's hit. not yeah. targeting. Jalen Carter with the little bump with the shoulder. Now, more importantly, forget the time part of it. That's a first down. Yeah. And I'm of the belief that had we not had the earlier targeting, maybe you don't throw that flag. But I, you know, I understand why. I mean, you don't want to yeah. get it out of control, exactly. uh, you know. So even though it goes against RCC, I understand what the officials want to do here and keep this game under control. You don't want to get too physical too early, especially these are two pretty good teams. Timeout on the field. RCC calls this one with 29 seconds to play in the first half. 16 to 3, the home team on top. First home game in the title defense for RCC. RCC comes in 2 and 0, Jeff. Mount San Jacinto, I guess they're awarded a forfeit. That was Labor Day weekend. And then last week on the road at Long Beach City College. And Long Beach City always plays them tough. Always. I mean, that's that's kind of the the, the rivalry. It used to be the Orange Empire Conference at one time. I guess it still is, but football is, it, is not, yeah, right? Football, yeah, football, I believe it's the national. It's SCFA something, and yeah. they, they, they redo the divisions. Because Saddleback, you know, up until the last configuration, Saddleback and RCC were in the same division exactly. no longer. First and ten line is the twenty nine. 
Saddleback with the ball. They trail 16 to three. Nash to throw. Here's pressure looking downfield and a flag comes in there as well. Devontae Davis Smith will get whistled on the interference. The intended receiver was Zachary Roebuck for Saddleback. So some penalties helping Saddleback on this drive. So it'll move to the 15. It'll be a first down from the 15. Now, if you're Saddleback, you got to take advantage, right? You definitely do. you got to put up, try to go for the score here and then get the ball right back in 22 seconds. You want any points you can get. Exactly. You get the three, but obviously the seven is what you're looking at here, especially when you get the ball back to start the second half. If you're James Cook, you just want to get off the field with no more than three. Yes, sir, buried to the top of your screen. First and 10 from the 15. Thrown to the outside. Complete at about the 10-yard line to Jeremy Cooper. Cooper, the sophomore from Carlsbad High in the San Diego area. No timeouts left. Well, no, because, yeah, RCC called last one. That's the last timeout now. Saddleback exhausts their last timeout with seven seconds. So you can run one play to the end zone, probably a pass, and then you got to go kick the field goal. you got to go back to those place, place kickers. Reminds me of Oklahoma, Boise State, 2006 Fiesta Bowl, 2007 oh. Fiesta Bowl. A little Statue of Liberty play right, here. Right, yeah. Get a look at Tom Kraft. James Cook, the defensive coordinator for RCC. He's in the booth to our left. I wonder what he's cooking up there. RCC has won eight of the last nine meetings between these two teams, dating back over the last decade. Pretty good rivalry. They've met in a couple of playoff and bowl games as well, Jeff. Saddleback, a very storied program. Mentioned already three national titles for them. They live basically in the top 25. Second down from the nine. Can get a first down inside the five, but not enough time. Nash throwing. Incomplete. Back to Cooper on the outside. Nice job by Nash just trying to make a play. His receiver was there, but couldn't quite wrap it up. And one second remains on the clock. And here comes the field goal team, Connor Grace. So Connor Grace will kick out of the hold of Dylan Widner, the punter. About a 26-yard field goal. He's already hit one today from 27. Here's the kick. Wide left. That's the end of the first half with the RCC Tigers leading this one 16-3. You know, we were joking around about ball control. What did you think in the first half? Uh, you know, it was it was punt, 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 punt. Defensive-minded game. Where, you know, both of these teams are notorious for their offensive skills. We didn't see it that first half. It was all defense and all kickers. couple of explosive offensive teams, a 16-3 to lead for RCC, going to the locker room, and Ricardo Chavez still standing out as the – MVP in the first half and then a defensive touchdown for RCC is where we're at right now. We'll step away for the halftime festivities and come back with the second half for you. Title defense begins at Wheelock Stadium for RCC. They lead the Bobcats of Saddleback College 16-3. to Jeff and I are back for the second half. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD. Air traffic accident with injuries. 1234 main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. 431. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right.
So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. The Riverside County Transportation Commission has partnered with California Operation Lifesaver to educate Riverside County residents about how to be safe around trains and railroad tracks. Here are three safety facts you need to know. First, trespassing on train tracks is not only dangerous and can lead to serious injury, it is also illegal. Second, you may not always be able to hear a train coming, which is why it's important to always stay off and away from tracks. And finally, it can take a train up to a mile to come to a complete stop. If an object or person is on the tracks and the train can't stop in time, unfortunately, a collision may occur. Now that you're the expert, you can help us spread the word by sharing these important safety messages with your friends and family. We thank you for practicing rail safety. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. My name is Melissa Olmos and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the City of Riverside and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookings. The residents call to the city to be serviced and these items is large furniture, mattress and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year and these items, I put it in the back of the packer and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residents' houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I tried to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. 
So these little pantries will serve in that capacity and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church and the City of Riverside. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries is in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right? For reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back five, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other. Um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD for a traffic accident with injuries. In 1234, main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. The Riverside County Transportation Commission has partnered with California Operation Lifesaver to educate Riverside County residents about how to be safe around trains and railroad tracks. Here are three safety facts you need to know. First, trespassing on train tracks is not only dangerous and can lead to serious injury, it is also illegal. Second, you may not always be able to hear a train coming, which is why it's important to always stay off and away from tracks. And finally, it can take a train up to a mile to come to a complete stop. If an object or person is on the tracks and the train can't stop in time, unfortunately, a collision may occur. Now that you're the expert, you can help us spread the word by sharing these important safety messages with your friends and family. We thank you for practicing rail safety. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. My name is Melissa Olmos and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the City of Riverside and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookies, the residents call to the city to be serviced and these items is large furniture, mattress and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream was to be a driver, and now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do, because when I go to the residents' houses, 
I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I try to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. So these little pantries will serve in that capacity, and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church, and the city of Riverside. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right? For reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back five, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other. Um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD for a traffic accident with injuries. In 1234, main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. 
The Riverside County Transportation Commission has partnered with California Operation Lifesaver to educate Riverside County residents about how to be safe around trains and railroad tracks. Here are three safety facts you need to know. First, trespassing on train tracks is not only dangerous and can lead to serious injury, it is also illegal. Second, you may not always be able to hear a train coming, which is why it's important to always stay off and away from tracks. And finally, it can take a train up to a mile to come to a complete stop. If an object or person is on the tracks and the train can't stop in time, unfortunately, a collision may occur. Now that you're the expert, you can help us spread the word by sharing these important safety messages with your friends and family. We thank you for practicing rail safety. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. My name is Melissa Olmos, and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the City of Riverside, and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookings, the residents call to the city to be serviced, and these items is large furniture, mattress, and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residence office, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I tried to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be it's perfect. favor of RCC. Tigers looking to go 3-0 and here on the young season. Squaring off against Saddleback. Saddleback last week, or two weeks ago actually, they were all over Glendale City College 58-12, to but the defense of RCC has held them in check. The big star tonight, Ricardo Chavez, and then a 40-yard interception return by DeMarcus Moore in the first half. That's the difference in this one. Saddleback starts the second half with the football. Jamari Farrell back deep for Saddleback along with Darius Maxwell. This is Maxwell will feel at the one. Maxwell, the Floridian, direct slant to the 20, and there he goes down. Met with the hit from RCC. Patrick Rodriguez out of Roosevelt High School. Played for our friend Tommy Leach. And at the 21-yard line, Saddleback starts it out. 
So a 20-yard return for Maxwell. Started his career at Hastings College in Nebraska NAIA school. Averaged 21 and a half yards of return last week. That was a 20-yarder right there. So call it the 22. First and 10. Nash with the give. Farrell trying to bounce it outside, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And that front for RCC, if, they've really been stout tonight. Oh, man, they have been one step ahead of that offense, and they are taking, funneling everything to the inside and taking care of business for sure. Give it a one-yard pickup, so second and nine coming up for Saddleback. Nash looks, Nash throws over the middle, complete. Let's see what they rule it there. Caught the ball at midfield. Incomplete as he couldn't hold it. That was Roebuck. Take another look, Jeff. Man, great hit here. I mean, he saved the day. If it's not for the hit, that's a, that is a completion. Hit on the play for RCC, Devontae Davis Smith. Remember, he was flagged earlier, so good job by him to just stay aggressive. Third down coming up. The line to get is the 33 on the Saddleback side of the field. Nash on third down, looking, throwing. Intended for Barry, incomplete on the coverage, DeMonte Peoples. And there's the defense. I'm telling you, that secondary might be the quickest we've seen. Even better, than I think, than the uh, national championship team. Tom Kraft told me, hey, our defensive backs, I like them. They're really good. My only concern is they haven't really had a chance to play together much. They held up okay last week. But, you know, you know, James Cook understands strengths and defenses, so he, he figured out how to use that personnel. I don't know if there's a coach at this level that knows how to use his personnel as well as Coach Cook. Widner gets the punt away, fielded at the 43. This is Ashley to the outside, to midfield, into saddleback territory. Inside the 40-yard line, about the 35-yard line. They're going to say he got to the 30. Wow. So about a 15-yard return on the play. And good field position for RCC to start out this drive, Jeff. They lead this one 16-3. to And they go with Bernie again here. So Bernie back, he started the game in the first quarter, threw for 91 yards in the first half. Kinslow just straight ahead, dives forward to the 35, four yards on the play. In the first half, total yards for both teams, 114 total yards for Saddleback, 160 for Riverside. They had 32 yards on the ground, 128 through the air did the Tigers. Second down, Kinslow. Running left, dives forward, should have the first down to the 29. Leading the way was the big guy in the middle, Ed Riley, the freshman out of St. John Bosco. See, Riley kind of collapsed behind Kinslow as he dives. And, you know, we talked about it in the outset. Coach Kraft very effusive in his praise for the big boys up front. All new players for RCC. First and 10, line is the 29, Bernie rolling right. Bernie throws, he's got a man. Touchdown, Tigers. Finds Jamal Houston. They hooked up earlier. That time they find Paydirt. Bud Bernie to Jamal Houston. Six points for RCC. Bernie had all, all the time in the world and found a perfect strike here in the corner. Bernie looking like the point guard. Three-year starter at Riverside Poly for both head coach Doug DeWitt and for head coach John Rice, and Chavez booms it through. He just kicked it over Mount Rubido. 23-3, RCC on top. 
Bernie, 3,200 3, passing yards over his three years at Riverside Poly, 25 passing TDs, and nearly 900 rush yards, 852 yush, rush yards and nine touchdowns. And the stat that jumps out from last week is Bernie was the leading rusher against Long Beach City. That's right. So 23-3, 39-yard drive there for RCC. Just to note, you know, DeMarco Moore had the pick six. He was ejected for a targeting penalty later, so they'll be playing without him in the second half. DeMonte Peoples will slide into his spot, if I'm guessing right. You know, we left out our guy, Yancey Dodds. Remember, uh, Bud Bernie played for Yancey. Our guy, Yancey. That's right, for the basketball team. That's huh? right. He was a great basketball player. He was part of the best high school basketball, best basketball game I've ever seen in my life. But that's a live ball. Dropped by Hicks. Hicks picks it up, trying to find some space, which he does. Gets up to the 25-yard line and is taken down by a cavalcade of Tigers just awaiting. Our guy Yancey Dodson's watching at home. Wearing a Hawaiian shirt, I'm guessing. He better be. Long, the, the long snapper Francisco Canales and Wyatt McClure combined on the tackle there to bring down Hicks and the offense back out for head coach Kerry Crabb. His first year as the head coach, but longtime assistant at Saddleback. Very storied program down there in South Orange County, Mission Viejo. 23-3, the Tigers look to be in control here. Growing in motion, resets. The give. That's Wimmer right into the right side of the defensive line for RCC. Not much doing there. Joshua Hatchett there with Chris Ballard. A couple of big boys up front. From the 25, second and 11 for Saddleback. Nash to throw. Here comes the pressure. Gets away, gets rid of it, complete to Groen. Loses his helmet. Caught the ball at about the 29-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Purcell was there. Ashley, check that, excuse me. That's not Ashley. They both wear number seven, but Jalen Carter there on the coverage. Flag comes in. I think that's going to be a first down. I think they got the passer. Well, that was the one thing about last week, RCC. No. They're going to take the penalty. It'll be yeah. second, and they'll do it over again, second and 21. They did have, I think, 13 penalties last week in the game against Long Beach City. So that was the tough one. Yeah, 12 penalties for 134 yards, and they still were able to hold Long Beach City to six points. And this would be more impressive, obviously, because Saddleback rolled up 58 points 58. against Glendale two weeks ago. Holding them to three years so far. Pretty sweet. I wanted to, you're an old coach. I want to discuss something with you after this play. Second and 20. Here's the pump. Here's the pressure. Wimmer makes the catch, and he's bought down by Cade Miller. Third down coming up. When you were coaching, when you're playing well, you want to keep playing, right? Exactly. So that was the unfortunate thing for Saddleback is they roll up on Glendale. They're supposed to play Mount Sac last Saturday and the game postponed because of COVID protocols. And they're going to make that game up in October. But when you're playing well, you want to be rolling, particularly – New, you know, first-year head coach. He's not a new coach. He's been with the team. But, you know, they got the momentum rolling, and you want to keep it rolling as a timeout called on the field. Yeah, you want to play as many games as you can if you're in the hot streak. For sure. I mean, I think also it's funny. When you're playing uh, – when you're not playing well, sometimes you can want to keep playing as well. But, it, you know, when you're, when you're losing – that's sometimes when a week off can maybe help a little bit. <laughs> that's when you go. Just for the sanity of the coach, right? Well, that, you know, what, you, what What would happen with me if we were losing, I'd just go hide in a closet somewhere. <laughs> and we wouldn't practice. And I would hope that nobody would notice I was gone. But, yeah, there's nothing nothing worse than losing and, and continuing to play. You're pretty hard to miss, Jeff. Yeah. Like when a 6'8 guy just isn't there, you know, <laughs> usually somebody's like, whoa, whoa, where is that guy? 
But you know, I I, I think like Pep Fernandez can slip away. No, well, 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 wait a minute. Where Pep? You know, takes a while. But you leave a room. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the only bad side about being giant. And there's other reasons too. Third down. Line is the 17. Over the middle, incomplete, intended for Hicks. Carlton Johnson on the coverage for RCC. Fourth down, and here comes the punt team. Widner already, this is going to be punt number six for him. He's averaged 45 yards per kick, and he's kicked one 69 yards. So this one from the 17. Standing at the 46-yard line of RCC is Marquise Ashley. Ashley from the 43. 41-yard kick, and Ashley trying to turn the corner, and he can't. Holding him up was Juan Lua, and coming over the top was Mason Young on the tackle for Saddleback, and that's where RCC starts the offense near midfield still pretty good field position jeff good field position and i'll tell you what they they're getting in their stride we saw bernie in the last possession looked i mean he's been he's been untouched for the most part most of the night 41 yard kick two yard return and he's not been touched mostly because of the big boys up front anthony lafrance oh, ed riley are. tristan hayes alan rennie and kyle scott Ooh. kyle scott had to momentarily leave the game and Brody Shafley came in and played admirably. First and ten. Bernie looking for it all. He's got Ashley downfield. Incomplete. Running step for step was Kyle Thomas with Saddleback. Good coverage by Thomas. He played at Aliso Niguel High down in South Orange County. Was a three-year starter in high school. Had three tackles and a tackle for loss against Glendale that Labor Day weekend. That's just that's just good defense. A little bit underthrown, but yeah, good yeah. coverage. If Kyle Thomas isn't good on the coverage, then Ashley can kind of maybe jump over him. Second and ten. 45 of RCC. Little delayed handoff up the middle. Got some space. Does Connors to the 40 of Saddleback inside the 35. And a good pickup there. 19 yard pickup for Connors. A little rhythm to. And again, it's that offensive line. Look at the downfield block there. Great downfield block. One of the wide receivers, Kimani Quaid, the freshman, out of Churchill, Oregon. From the 36. Bernie looking for the home run. Incomplete. Corvin Fegans covering J.J. Tucker on the play. Yeah, and there's you know, a lot of chatter thinking that that is a pass interference but it's underthrown you can't it's really right. a tough call there might be some uh, a little push and shove but yeah i mean hand fighting and you know if you're yeah. not if it doesn't change the play you can do that Vinny fazio talks about that a lot connor's up the middle and he's an offensive guy connor's with a nice little stutter step inside the 25 they'll mark him at the 22 another first down 14 yards for connor's so he's rolling a little bit the last two series, they seem to get back in a little bit of rhythm here. Connors now seven carries, 53 yards. Remember, Riverside had to, they've, they've had to not play a couple games as well due to COVID. Well, they had to forfeit, Matt Sanicino had to forfeit that opener. So this is just their second game. Another delayed handoff to Connors, and he runs right into the hands of Timothy Jones. The sophomore out of Sierra Vista, Arizona, Buena High School. Maybe three on the play. Clock continues to move here in the third quarter. 23-3 to three RCC leads. Second and six. Bernie dancing, throwing to the corner. He's going to burn it. Third down coming up. This is where the game flipped last week when both lines for RCC kind of started to assert their authority late in the game against Long Beach City. Yeah, and I tell you, it's just you look at the size of these guys, they're huge up front. 
And they got to, you know, their Coach Kraft teams are always in well-conditioned uh, programs. Tucker and Ashley to the near side for RCC. Get your way to the top of your screen. Third and six. Bernie throws to the outside. Incomplete intended for Gitchaway. Fourth down, and you got Chavez coming out. Of course. <laughs> it's, but this is kind of close. This isn't. Uh, I want to see 50. I want to see 60, my friend. Well, if you're Tom Craft, you take the bird in hand. Right? Exactly. You know you're going to get the three <laughs> points. And Listen. I mean, Tom Kraft has been around this game. He's seen it all. For him to rave about a kicker the way he raved about Ricardo Chavez, you knew this guy was a dude, the real deal. And he misses. No. Misses to the right on that one. 35-yard oh. attempt, his first miss on the evening. So saddle back with an opportunity. All right, is he still the MVP? Yeah, okay. For now. For now. <laughs> I mean, I, I would split it between he and the offensive line, and the, big, the big boys. You know, I'd probably give a Talib Salahuddin a vote. Purcell yeah. oh, would probably get a yeah. vote for me. Gilmore might get a vote. We haven't called his name a lot, but he's been his nose has been around the football. From the 21st and 10, here's Farrell kind of grading some road in front of him. And, Barrels to the 22. Second and eight coming up. Farrell again trying that left side. TJ Patsu with the tackle there, the freshman out of Tustin. Bounce back from the University of Colorado. Boy, they are so tough up front. Third and five from the 25. Empty set as Farrell goes into motion there. Lofting it up. And what a grab. He couldn't hold it. He couldn't bring it down. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside. That's Carlton Johnson against Samuel Hicks. Hicks went up and got it but couldn't reel it in on the way down. Fourth down. Yeah, perfect throw, though. Good throw and a good, you know, Hicks getting to the ball was good, but... Johnson with him step for step wasn't able to come down with it. Another punt. We've seen a lot of Dylan Widmer today. We have. Spent last year at Santa Barbara City College, although he did not play football. So obviously there was no junior college football last yeah. year, so we went kind of just for an academic experience up there. 2020 grad of Mission Viejo High School where he played football and he played soccer. That's a good punt. Great punt. And at the 41-yard line will be fair caught. 35-yard kick, no return. And RCC will turn it back the other way. 8.08 to play in the third quarter. They're comfortably out in front, 23-3, but plenty of time. Saddleback's offense, they can turn it on in a moment. They're very explosive. And when you put up 58, you got to be doing something right. I mean, it's also just kind of their legacy. Yeah. They've been a, kind of an offensive machine. We mentioned Mark McElroy already. He'd been there 21 years. From the 41, it's first and 10 for RCC. Trips to the near side. Bernie's still in there. You know, and talking about the national championship team two years ago, you know, they, they were an offensive juggernaut. Their offense, their their. They're 520 yards a game. Yeah, I mean, 49.6 points per game. Their their defense was outscoring you, is what it was. But we're looking at this RCC team now, and it might be the best defensive team we've seen here. Lawrence Starks on the carry. Houston up top, the, the far uh, top of your screen split out is JJ Tucker. Here's Starks again. Starks being dragged, pulled down from the ankles by Mason Young, but still. Kind of managed to move forward for a couple of yards. Third down upcoming. Young, a freshman from Brighton, 
High School in Cottonwood, Utah. Last two seasons, his teams went 18-4. and four. Was a two-way starter his last two years at both wide receiver and defensive back. Third and four, two by two. Bernie looks downfield, incomplete. Houston wants a call, but he and Gashikin just got tangled up, I believe, on the sideline. Fourth down. Yeah, it looks like their feet just. And we'll see Ricardo Chavez again. Back to return for Saddleback is Yassir Berry. Trying to get back to the D1 ranks. Miss hit by Chavez, but it goes out of bounds and around the 20. Let's see where they mark it. He hit, he kicked that with his toes. Definitely tell he miss hit that one. Let's see where they spot it. They're spotting at the 22. So about a 31-yard kick, no return. And that's where Saddleback will tee it up again. Hey, if you're the if you're the Bobcats, you can still get back into this one. You just need a quick score. Quick score. Plenty get of the time momentum going. The third. Throw to the outside. This is Barry off the completion, dancing. New quarterback in for Saddleback. This is Owen Easley. Easley, a freshman from San Diego, California. Prepped at Christian High. And Carlton Johnson grabbed made that tackle by grabbing over the top of the guy that he was blocking. Three-yard pickup, second and seven coming up. Jeremy Cooper to the bottom of your screen for Saddleback. Give to Farrell instead. That's Anthodius Ashley. Up to the 27-yard line. Ashley, the sophomore out of Phoenix. Kaylin, Kylan Ross came in and made the play. Bobcats can't, Bobcats can't get anything up the middle here versus Riverside right now. It's kind of a replay of last week against Long Beach when the defensive line really controlled, particularly in the second half. They really controlled that game for RCC. Easily looking over the middle, complete to his big tight end to the 40-yard line, and he's decleated at the 43. Coming up and making the play for RCC was Devontae Davis-Smith. Bowden Groen makes the catch, the freshman out of modern day. Had a catch for 12 yards on Labor Day weekend against Glendale. Was part of that 2018 modern day state championship team. And here's Anthodius again into RCC territory, and Thodius Ashley. Oh, there's a late flag here. They'll add five yards. T.J. Patu apparently kicked at the ball after the play. I think he was just kind of frustrated with yeah. himself, and the official bought the flag, and so a first down to the 42-yard line of RCC for a saddleback. Bowden growing with the big catch, the tight end. I really like him. I think he's a pretty good ball player. Jeremy Cooper split out to the near side. To the top of your screen, that's Yassir Berry. Here's the give to Anthodius. Ashley finds some space on the left side. Gets to the 40-yard line. I think what they've seen is Anthodius Ashley is their physical runner. So I think perhaps maybe his physicality is a better match for the guys up front for RCC. He's able to kind of make yardage through contact. Second down. Here's Ashley again. He's got the first down. A flag comes in. Ashley down to the 25-yard line. See what the flag's all about. Came from the back judge. Second 
They'll take the yardage on the play for Anthodius Ashley. And he's kind of been the answer for Saddleback. New quarterback in as well. Owen easily started this drive. He's thrown to the end zone. Nearly picked off, intended for Barry. Making the play for RCC, Samaj Williams. Williams, the freshman out of L.A., played at Cathedral. Beautiful football field. I don't know if you've ever been to Cathedral no. in L.A. It's in downtown. So if you stand in the oh, end I've zone, seen it. Yes. the, the, yes. the, uh, the skyline of That's downtown right. L.A. is in the background. Second and ten from the 26. There's also a Cathedral Catholic down in San Diego. Ashley pumps, puts some air under it. Did he make the play? He did not incomplete. Good help over top from Carlton Johnson. That was Williams again making the play for the defense for RCC. Third and ten coming up from the 26 for Saddleback. And they're going to have to throw the ball here again, Gazal. Bobcats, they just need a score to get them turned around, get them going a little bit. Ashley throws incomplete. Barry lost his footing, was trying to get back up. Johnson on the coverage for RCC, fourth down. So it looks like they may be trying a field goal here. They are. This is Justin Kaplan, the sophomore from San Diego, transfer from Albany, Torrey Pines, high product. Interesting football lineage we'll get into. It's a 43-yard attempt. So Kerry Crabb trying to get some points. Young Mr. Kaplan puts his foot into it. On the way. And it's good. 43-yard field goal for Justin Kaplan. So his father... Scott That's Kaplan right. was a kicker also. He played at the University of Pittsburgh back in the late 80s, early 90s. His coach, well, he had two coaches, but his first coach at Pitt, the guy who recruited him, was Mike Gottfried, whose nephew used to, I used to work for at UC yeah. son, Mark Gottfried, the longtime collegiate basketball coach, right. Uncle Mike. And he had some interesting teammates. One of his teammates at Pitt, meaning uh, Scott Kaplan, was Lewis Riddick, who's now a commentator on the uh, NFL. Wow. Played at uh, 89, 90, and 91. His pit team, I, they have a distinction. They played, and I think they won it. But maybe they lost it. They played in the last Blue Bonnet Bowl. The I think last, it was like in 88 or 89. The last Blue Bonnet Bowl. I think it, it, they changed the name to something. Yeah. So. And he's also, he's a, he's a radio guy. He is. He is. He is. So Daddy Scott probably very proud of Justin on the field goal. 43 yards makes it 23-6. to six. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. We always say this, you know, plenty of time here because you never know how this football bounces the way it's shaped. Now, RCC has been fairly dominant, but you can get something going here. Saddleback's defense has been over all right, too. He also played for Paul Hackett. He did. Yeah, Paul Hackett was the head coach at Pitt as well in that time period. Here's the return by Connors. Dives and is submarined at the 20, maybe up to the 22-yard line. First and 10 coming up. Coach Kraft talking to his guys. Looks like Bernie's going to stay in. Sense of urgency here on both sides, obviously. If you're saddleback, you just want to stop and get the ball. But if you're RCC, I'm sure what Coach Kraft is saying, hey, Let's move the ball, and let's keep the clock running. Exactly. Let's, let's get this game over with. Play smart football. Don't turn it over. Let's eat some clock. Elijah Bennett, the setback. Bernie gives to Elijah, dances inside, dives forward. Grabbing him around the ankles was Matthew Poking, sophomore from Dana Point, Dana Hills High, down there in South Orange County. What's the Dana Hills mascot? Do you know? I do not. The Dolphin. That's a great, that's a good Isn't one. It? That's a good one. If you'd played for Dan Hills, you would have been Dolphin of the Year every year, Jeffrey. <laughs> Second and six from the 26 for RCC. Play action. Bernie looking. Complete to Ashley. Ashley to the 35 before he's taken down. James McDonald was there. 
39-yard pickup on the strike. And, man, when we saw Bud Bernie in high school, he was an RPO QB. I mean, he had a good arm, but Tom Kraft told me his throwing has improved. Look at that. Hits it on the dime right in front of that painted Tiger visage at midfield, and McDonald wrestles him down at the 35. Bernie with the give to Bennett, and down he goes. Sniffing out that play from the beginning was Angelo Rooks. Rooks from Northampton High School in Gaston, North Carolina. Gaston? He actually played in the game he uh, well, a game in Mission Viejo in 2019 against RCC, game the Tigers won. He had three tackles in that game, did Rooks. Yeah, and talking about Bernie, though, remember, at, at Pollock, he was usually running for his life, and here he's... We get to see the quarterback he was destined to be. Four-yard loss. Second down. Bennett totes it. Finds a little bit of a seam to the 30-yard line. Upended by Sanders, 31 call it. Third down coming up. Well, that, and that's what Coach Kraft talked about. Is like we, when he got here, he was an athlete. Yeah, very, and he could yeah. throw a little bit, but he just he was really, really complimentary about how much Bud had worked to improve his throwing, how much a better thrower he's become. Development's a big part of it. Third and six coming up. Houston to the top of your screen to the far slot is Ty Moore. J.J. Tucker to the bottom of your screen in the near slot, Marquise Ashley. Throw down the field by Bernie, looking for Ashley. Incomplete. Kyle Thomas on the coverage for Saddleback. Fourth down. And Ricardo Chavez will come out. This will be a 48-yard kick. He's got to redeem himself. He's made three today. 53, 54, 27, missed from 35. Out of the hold of James Odom. Chavez, that looks good. Right down the middle. Yeah. 26 to 6. What a performance tonight by Ricardo Chavez. Tom Kraft wasn't kidding. No. And you know how much I love kickers. This is this is. This is a dream, a dream game. You love kicking. You know, it's funny because head coaches generally don't. To hear a guy like Tom, he's an old school, you know, yeah. offensive guy. Old ball you know, coach. And and he, he was really, he said, wow, you know. Now part of it is back on the staff for RCC. Daniel Barlage, one of the assistants, is back on the staff for RCC. He had been on coach on the staff and then left to go be the head coach at uh, Valley View while his son, you know, Jacob played. Yeah. He played here at RCC and now is at Nevada. And... Ricardo Chavez is a Valley View guy. And he'd been, you know, he didn't come right to RCC because he graduated in 2018. Yeah. And now he's here, and, and it's good they found each other. I'm a little, you know, Dan Barlage, uh, Coach Barlage, his entire family has CIF championships. That's right. His wife is a volleyball coach. Yeah. And his daughter played volleyball. Fourth, uh, here's the kickoff coming from Chavez. Booms it deep. Here's Hicks. Over the 30 to the 36. Hicks tackled 36-yard line. Flag comes in on the play. Let's see the play. Ah, oh, it's going to be a block in the back. I saw it. Imari Coates from Moreno Valley, Canyon Springs High, made the tackle. And so it'll be against Saddleback. It'll move back. A minute 21 to play. So the clock dwindling. Time now becoming a factor if you're Saddleback trying to get into this, back yeah, into mean, this one. Honestly, they're going to have to score quickly. And they haven't been able to do anything really offensive. This defense is, I, I'm telling you, yeah. we've seen a lot of well, RCC listen, teams. In, in a comeback, you count, you're you thinking about a quick score, but you're not counting on it, right? No. But you have to get the score and then you hope you get a bounce to get you back into it. And you have to be aggressive. you got to go for the big strike, too. So Easley stays in at quarterback. And Anthodius Ashley back at running back. And he goes the right side maybe a yard or two on the play. The more physical runner. You know, I, I wonder if Andrew Wimmer is hurt because Andrew Wimmer wasn't 
doing badly. No. Patu with the initial hit, and he breaks through that, but it throws him off balance enough to where he goes down. T.J. Patu, the freshman, La Habra High School, started at Colorado, easily thrown to the outside. That's complete to Hicks, not much. Flag on the play. So that'll put it up to the 37-yard line, Jeff. And well, you know what? You know what? Tom Kraft's going to be crowing about in practice. Of course he is. Knock it off, guys. Look at me doing what are that bear crawls and wow, 11 penalties in the first half. They had 12 in the whole game against Long Beach City. So somebody's going to be running. Into the final minute here in the third quarter. The give to Anthodius Ashley, but the middle clogs up over the 40. Actually, the line of scrimmage is the 41, so he'll get two more. 43. And that likely will be the last play here in the third quarter with the Tigers leading 26-6, man down on the field. I know you always like this segment of the broadcast. You want to talk about some prominent alumni from Mich- from uh, Saddleback College? Are there pr- prominent alumni? There are. Well, a lot of them are sports. Okay. But we'll start with the ones that are not sports related. Uh, I like the non-sports related. You watch movies. You and the wife watch movies. I, you ever see Backdraft? What are you talking about? It's one of the greatest movies ever. Directed by Ron Howard. Greg Wyden, UCLA alum, okay. wrote the screenplay for Backdraft. He had been a volunteer firefighter. That's how he got the idea for the for the script. And he was a Saddleback He's a Saddleback guy. guy. He might have taken a screenwriting class at Saddleback College. Backdraft is a fantastic movie. Not an alum of Saddleback, but a prominent personality from Saddleback. <laughs> the old ball coach, the old basketball coach with the saddle shoes, Bill Mulligan. Oh, you know, he's, he's literally was... One of our dearest family friends. I did not know that. Uh, Billy Mulligan Jr. Okay. was a longtime sports writer and is in the Hall of Fame here at RCC. Well, his dad coached there too, his right? His dad was also a basketball coach here. But, yeah, one of my dad and one of our closest friends in the world. Second and seven coming up and a timeout on the field. We'll have another break. At the, it's not a timeout. It's the end of the third quarter. So the third quarter expires. So we can keep doing the, uh, the Saddleback uh, alumni uh, keep going, keep but yeah, Billy Mulligan, one of my Bill Mulligan, my favorite coach of all time. Okay, so in in line with Bill Mulligan, so the, the next two will be easy okay, for you. Okay. Uh, played at Irvine and then later played in the NBA. A big man. Oh, I already know who it is. Kevin McGee. No, Kevin McGee never played in the NBA. That's no, next. That's right. Okay, he played in the NBA. Uh, Johnny Rogers, Big Bob Thornton, Bobby Thornton played that's for the right. Knicks. That's right. When I was a little kid. I remember watching the Knicks, and then I got to Irvine as a student. Hey, Bob Thornton played and, here. And Bob Thornton's brother was Billy Mulligan's assistant coach for a long time. That's right. Yeah, you and, mentioned you uh, mentioned the great Kevin McGee, the greatest player ever to play at UC Irvine. He, he is he is one of my all time favorite players of ever. I mean, he was just a passed away sadly in a traffic accident. He did. He did. But remember, he was part of that Olympic team that was uh, that they didn't go. Oh, remember it was the the boycott year, and he was going to be a starter, and he was that was going to be his coming out party. He was gonna, he was an Olympian. Flip the field, second and seven from the forty-four, for the Bobcats. Owen Easley in at quarterback, the third quarterback employed by Coach Kerry Crabb. He's dancing around to the right side, and then he'll go down. All I want to know is, do you have the notables for RCC, too? There's too many notables. We talk about them every week, though. I, we do. My, I have a lot of favorites, though. Lots of favorites from RCC. We could, I could go on for hours with the... The notable alums. Chris Ballard really put the pressure on there. You know, yeah, the biggest, the biggest celebrity is our director, Scott Brocious. He's the most notable. Biggest. Alum. He's 170 pounds. That guy. <laughs> no, we 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 love we love Scott. We love working with Scott. He's always great to us. Chris Ballard with the tackle, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas, Mansfield Tiverview High, and. And Coach Kraft talked about him very glowingly as well. Putting the pressure on, third down and 14 coming up, timeout taken on the field. 
But you mentioned Kevin Me. How, how about some other sports? How about the great Bill Kenny? Okay. He played quarterback for the Kansas City That's Chiefs right. in the 80s, maybe into the 90s. Um, he went via Cal State Fullerton to the major leagues. Tim Wallach. Tim Wallach. Mark Grace. Mark Grace. Mark Grace is a Saddleback guy? Yeah. According to their website. Is it the same Mark Grace? I hope. Played for the Cubs. That's right, yeah. And the Diamondbacks. Third down coming up. And Thodeus Ashley, the lone setback. Nash back in at QB. Here comes a pressure. Throws it as he is hit and picked off. Carlton Johnson at the 45. He's going to go in to the house. Carlton Johnson, pick six. Touchdown, RCC. That was a jump ball. Now, there's the penalty. Larceny from Carlton Johnson from the Rancho Verde High. It was like he's back on the track in Moreno Valley running the 100-yard dash there, 100 meters. Holy smoke. That was that was lightning fast. I mean, it didn't even look like he was trying and he was outrunning everybody. That's how fast Carlton Johnson is. He's flying. Effortless. That could be the two to coup de gras at this point. You think? The defense just swarming, you know, and we're joking with James Cook and – uh, wow. Two straight weeks. And even Coach Kraft said, you know, Long Beach, you know, they're always tough. They always play us tough. But from a talent standpoint, they're not the Long Beach teams that we've played in the past. They'll get there, but they're not there yet. Whereas Saddleback, you know, Nuke Lelouch, right? They announced their presence with authority yeah. against Glendale. So they'll enforce unsportsmanlike. Cel uh, you know, a cel excessive celebration will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. And here, Chavez has had a big night. You know what would have been great if he'd have ran and jumped into the band. That would have been cool. He didn't, like, I think band that, surfing, that, like crowd surfing. Yeah, that, I think I don't think COVID protocol would allow that at this point. That's why you got to carry your your, uh, your mask in your back pocket. That would what a move would that be? Put it to, to you score a touchdown. Put a mask on. Dive yeah. into the crowd. I, I'm telling you, somebody. If guys, you're watching this game later on, I want to see this young man run into the jump on a tuba. I always like when the players would direct the band, start conducting the band. Yes. That was always pretty cool. That would be a great one too. Yeah, Just Carlton fun. Johnson with see, the pick six. He went the wrong way. Thirty-three to six. You know, and, and, and you coach, you understand this. When you talk to coaches, I was surprised because probably 80% of what we spoke of with Tom Kraft was stuff he was happy with. That's generally not the case. No. Nope. And I attribute it to being, well, it's early in the season. But he did, you know, he said, hey, we got a lot to work on. And he didn't, it's funny because he didn't mention the penalties. I, I saw that on the box score. But he did say, hey, there's things we need to get better at. Now, one of the things that we talked about, and so – you notice if you look at the field, it looks fine, but doesn't look quite as pristine as you'd think it would look for the opening game. It's because the Tigers have been practicing on the game field for the last couple of weeks. A couple of reasons for that. We'll get into it. Pharrell back along with Nino Remigio. Pharrell with the return. Jamari Pharrell still on his feet at the 35. And down he goes. Penalties, flags on the play, tackle on the play, Nathan Bolton for RCC, and we'll uh, sort it out. Isaiah Garcia also there for RCC. The freshman out of Grace Brethren where he played for Josh Henderson. Huh? Josh Henderson, formerly head coach at Grace Brethren, previously was at Aquinas for many right. years. and. Played for Dick Bruick at Fontana. First of all, illegal legs block on their third team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that's another penalty on Saddleback, which I find interesting. They only had three penalties in the first half. A lot of laundry today, Jeff. But, I mean, it's early yeah. in the season, I guess, huh? But not. I mean, it's pretty typical for community college football i mean we call we've called games that are four plus hours right due to True. penalties 
This one kind of clipping along, yeah, it's though. Pretty I'm surprised. Well, we started at six, though, so. Going in motion. This is Wimmer back into the game. Slams up to the 15-yard line. Yeah, I don't have to pay the babysitter as much tonight if we're going to be home early. Wife's at Hamilton right now listening to the, to some Lin-Manuel Miranda music. Pardon me. Are you Aaron Burr, sir? Sir? Am I, am I a bad guy? Am I a weirdo that I listen to it in the car? No, why not? Uh, very hip. It's catchy. You got to admit it's catchy. catchy. the show tunes. I can't wait for the new uh, West Side Story coming out. From the 15, Wimmer again. Burrows to the 20. Tackle on the play for RCC. Darius Wallace. New guys getting into the match. Now he's ridden down, actually. I should give credit also to the guy who wrote him down from behind, Joshua Hatchett. Third down. First down to the 25. <coughs> Easily sidearm slinging it. Caught by Jeremy Cooper, short of the first down. He'll bring up fourth. We have a pretty good crowd here tonight, and, and everybody that is here, every single person in here is vaccinated. It's a pretty good crowd for a Saturday, Jeff. <laughs> I, I was wondering about that, yeah, because there's a new there's a new procedure. Yeah. And you have to fill out. There's a criterion you got to fill out to even be eligible to come on campus, you and they make you campus, show your yeah. status. Yeah. Fourth and two from the 23. It's a punt coming up. Back deep to receive time more for RCC. Makes the fair catch at the 41-yard line. So, 36-yard kick, no return. There was there was some concern that uh, Riverside wasn't going to get to play their home games on okay, campus. Okay, so, so, you know, I had that discussion with Coach Kraft. Okay. And they were looking, actually, his main concern seemed to be the practice field, which, which I guess there's some issues with the practice field, and I'm guessing, and I'm just speculating right now, so... They win the national championship, and then the pandemic happens, and nobody's allowed to come and work, right, because we're all staying at home. Yeah, you couldn't be on campus. And there was probably some maintenance to be done because the field, the practice field right behind this, the main stadium here at Wheelock and probably wasn't able to be maintained, you know, 12 to 14 months. Exactly. Those things add up from the 41. Odom looking down. He's looking for the home run ball. Incomplete. Intended for J.J. Tucker. Second and ten coming up. So James Odom back in the freshman quarterback from Grossmont High was 9 of 14 through the year in the first game, 54 yards against Long Beach City. He was also a starting point guard for his high school team, Jeff. But who was better? He or Bud? Connors. Burrowing up to the 45, four-yard pickup there. Well, I'll say this. Odom started as a freshman for the varsity. So that's pretty impressive. Right, that's pretty good. Now, it's you know, you can compare San Diego basketball to Riverside basketball. I don't want to get into that argument. I do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> you want to get me in trouble whenever you can, <laughs> third and six. I think they should play one-on-one -on -one at the end of the season. We film it. Remember, like, remember they used to have the horse games on ABC. Connors running behind that offensive line, gets to the second level and goes down at the 40. 15-yard pickup, move the sticks. I remember years ago, as a kid, I mean, it was like mid-80s. They used to have alumni games, and all the guys would play. Yes, yes. I remember watching like a UNC-UCLA alumni game from Pauley Pavilion. Like Michael Jordan was playing, yes. and Reggie Miller was playing. It was wild. Mark at the 41, a first and 10. Connors, the setback, split out to the near side is Gitchaway. He'll turn and give to Connors. He'll veer left. Now cut back inside, and down he goes. Tackle on the play made by Drew Hernandez, the freshman of Carlsbad, for Saddleback. He gets up from the bottom of the pile there. Second down coming up. 
It is weird though. You know, I was a I was a ball boy when I was when I was about eight years old here, and I did it for years. And and now I get to call games. I coach basketball here at RCC. It's it's what a great time. Odom pulls it down. Now he'll loft it down the field. Incomplete. One on one. JJ Tucker down the field. Brian Sanders on the coverage for Saddleback. That's why I call you the governor, my friend, the governor of Riverside. Did I tell you last night I was at North High School and somebody yelled the governor to me? <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. That's I'm a great. Gov- I'm a governor of, of, of the city. Because we, we, we took so long to figure it out because you're friends with Rusty Bailey, so you didn't want to like you didn't want to be the mayor. But I said, you can be the governor of Riverside. That's pretty cool. Trips to the near side for RCC. J.J. Tucker to the top of your screen. I don't think I get recalled either. I don't think so. I don't think you would. There'd be some loud mouths trying to do it, but you'd, you'd survive. <laughs> delay a game, or did they call timeout, or was it delay? So RCC got the timeout, and Tom Kraft will go and teach. And Coach looks good. You're right. Got a chance to kind of maybe rest up during the pandemic. and His mustache looked pretty nice. Great stash. Hey, you know, we were talking about trash earlier, and we need to bring this up again. It's free dump day, baby. Caltrans is partnering with the city of Riverside to collect the public's trash and unwanted items on Saturday, September 25th from 9 to 3. Please, no hazardous waste, no paint, no solvents, batteries, home remodel or demo waste, electronics, flammables, (sighs) it's a lot of things, petroleum products, aerosols, or compressed gases. All loads must be tied or secured or they will not be accepted. The event will be held at the Caltrans Maintenance Station located at 1091 Everton Place in Riverside. That means I can't throw anything away because all the things I have are those things. Just paper and cardboard and my old mittens. Third and six, play action. Odom will run it. And down he goes inside the 35. Angelo Rooks on the tackle for Saddleback. So fourth and four coming up. Field goal from here would be about 50, 50, 50, or 51. Do it. I think they want to keep the clock running, though. 33 to 6. Ricardo Chavez has had a day, and we'll see him again. Here he comes. Here he comes. Appointment TV. He's already made two of 50 plus. He's kind of like a celebrity. He should get his own. Uh, I'm telling you, go up to the bookstore and buy number 10. Oh, well, look, there's no, not, this is the punt team. They're oh, going to have him punt. punt. Come on. Come on, Coach Kraft. I want to see a 60. Trevor Romaldo <gasps> drops back to receive. He's going to go for the coffin corner. Look at that. <gasps> wow. That's why they had him out there. They say, hey, oh. put one in the corner. You already yeah. did a 50-yarder. That's old hat. Let's see if he can put one out, and he yeah. absolutely does. I'm telling you, man. He's going to be dating movie stars in about a week. 37-yard kick, 37-yard <laughs> net. You know, Jennifer Aniston said last week she wants to date a regular guy. But she can't date him because he's not regular. He's a superstar. I mean, you know, all, all kidding aside, if you're – I saw UTEP's got a coach, in the, a scout in the stands tonight. I mean, you got to be impressed with young Ricardo Chavez. Sign him. Or just go straight to the pros. I mean, no, it's becoming important. You know, you're you're one of the – if you're not, you know, Alabama, or if you're not Notre Dame, if you're not one of those schools that blows everybody out, you play close games. You need them. The kicking game, I mean, even those schools need a good kicker, obviously, but it just becomes so important. Fourth quarter. He's a rock star. 8.58 to play. Owen Easley back at quarterback for Saddleback, and the flag comes in. Now that yeah, – I know you're – so tight with the Mulligan. I want to know Bill Mulligan's stories. I used so to he, he, he used to when I remember at Irvine, he actually used to recruit the Inland Empire a lot. No. Well, he, he okay. recruit, he, you know, he recruited me since I was a freshman. He was really just one of those, a wonderful guy. But I, I will say this: I used to take his son Billy, uh, who was in a wheelchair. He was cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. Great writer though, and I would take him in the van. He, he I'd go over to his house. His uh, caretaker would load him up in the van. I'd drive down to almost every UC Irvine game, and I'd get to sit at the end of the bench, and he was recruiting me. That's it was I mean. great. So who was that? Was, was Von Lutzow on that team yet? 
Pardon Jeff, me? Jeff Von Lutzo, you remember him? I remember Von Lutzo, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of that era of uh, UCI basketball. Because he did. He, I mean, Mulligan, obviously, his RCC it background. was like Wayne Engelstadt and those guys. That was a little before, though. That was, yeah. that, was a, that was a Scott Brooks era. Yeah. Here's the give. I believe that's Ashley for a couple. You remember no, instead, that's Farrell, Jamari Farrell. Remember Scott Brooks and I had a, 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 a battle. You don't like each other. No, I don't. I don't like Scott Brooks because he fought me when I was like 15 years old and he was a grown man. But you were large, so he couldn't tell that you weren't a kid. I had this little tiny guy on my back. Yeah. And I do remember Bill, uh, Bill Mulligan getting mad at him, too. <laughs> Two yards on the play. Here's Farrell again right up the middle. Find some space over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Tackle on the play made by Miles Martin for RCC. First I, down for Saddleback. I did sit in a hot tub with Jerry Tarkanian and Bill Mulligan at the same time. Farrell breaks the first tackle. A few more yards. He's up to the 25-yard line. I think that's probably my best Bill Mulligan story. Is I was a young guy, mm -hmm. and I got to hang out with uh, Jerry Tarkanian. He came over to Mulligan's house, and I got to sit in a hot tub and listen to them uh, say who was a better coach at RCC. Isaac Garcia in on the tackle there, but a flag on the play. So when I first got into the business, when I was a young guy, I had a couple interactions with Coach Tark, and for whatever reason, he loved me. He always took care of me. He introduced me to Tommy Lasorda at the Brent Center. He did? Yeah. I remember a friend of mine who I went to college with. She was from... Well, my dad used to take me up to UNLV every summer, and we would hang out with Tark. And I he let me one time... I don't know if I should say it. Well, he's long past. I can say mm -hmm. these things. But I got to get into the UNLV equipment room. Nice. And they said... Take whatever you like. <laughs> so I took a bunch. I took uh, Spoon James. I don't know if you remember Spoon James. I took his basketball shoes he gave to me and a bunch of uh, shirts. Kenneth Cervantes, the injured Tiger, off the field. Second and two coming up from the 26. Little reverse action coming up. And there's the hit, but down he goes at the 30-yard line. Carrying the ball, Nino Remigio, the freshman from Mater Day, Gets the first down up to the 30 on the trickeration. Nino's older brother, Nico, played football at Cal. Also played at Modern Day for Bruce Rollinson. First and 10. Line is the 30. Under eight minutes to play. Jamari Farrell again. About four for him. Wow, he's doing a good job. Getting up from the uh, bottom of the pile for RCC is Garrett Beach. Talib Salahuddin also in on the hit. Second and six. Easily rolls right. Salahuddin in pursuit. Launches it down the field. That's intercepted. Picked off at about midfield. Making the interception. Samaj Williams. Williams with the pick. Number three today for RCC. Two pick sixes. And now Williams, who nearly had one in the end zone, picks this one off. Salahuddin applying the pressure. And just playing the outfield there, picking it off at the 46 of RCC and returning it into Saddleback territory inside the 40. How impressive is this? If, if RCC can hold and keep them from scoring a touchdown, I mean, that's, that's a pretty impressive. Right. And James Cook, you know, he deserves every bit of credit, uh, the same amount of credit. And I'm sure Coach Kraft gives it to him, every bit of credit that Coach Kraft deserves for this team's success. That's Lawrence Starks. Starks up to the 23, an 11 yard pickup. They'll move the sticks. Will the Tigers? And it has been pretty impressive. I mean, Saddleback, pretty good football team. And Riverside, more or less, has had their way with them tonight. They really have. And defense, I mean, just stellar defensively. J.J. Tucker to the top of the screen. Odom gives to Starks. Starks skitters. Inside the 15, he's down there. Garrett Colburn was there along with Angelo Rooks on the tackle. Nine-yard pickup, so they marked the 13. Starks again. 
Caden Robertson on the tackle for Saddleback. Sticks move up. First and goal for RCC. Mentioned Saddleback been pretty successful. They've gotten to the postseason eight of the last nine seasons. So first and goal from the eight, a penalty was flagged on Saddleback. RCC dec declines. Starks runs right into Rooks at about the five. Twenty nineteen, after losing to RCC, they lost to Canyons in the first round of the SoCal Regionals. Twenty eighteen, a seven and four team played Bakersfield in the Patriotic Bowl. Regional playoff game in twenty seventeen. They lost at Fullerton. Starks. They get a They said he lost the ball? Yeah, fumble on the ground, they said. Touchback, wow. Here's the replay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Dropping on the ball was Trevor Romaldo. Dropped on the football for Saddleback, and the touchback ruled. Good call. Saddleback football at the 20. 2015, a 10-3 team. They put, made the state final. They beat RCC in Long Beach City College, lost to the City College of San Francisco. No postseason for the Bobcats, who were then the Gauchos in 2014. Played in the Citri Citrus College in the Beach Bowl in 2013. They lost to Mount Sac in the National Bowl in 2012. And they lost to RCC in the Golden State Bowl in 2011. First and 10, easily slinging it. Incomplete on the far side. Intended for Jeremy Cooper on the defense. Bryce Tate for RCC. Tate out of Tempe, Arizona, McClintock High. Thirty-three to six, RCC pretty much in control. Game was close until the half, second half. RCC pulled away. They have not scored an offensive touchdown yet, though. Easily dancing down at the twenty-one. Third down, need to get the 30. Easily. Puts it up in the air, one on one down the field, incomplete. Intended for Jeremy Cooper again. Bryce Tate again on the coverage. One offensive touchdown, actually. That was, that yeah, was one correct. There was one. Jamal Houston. Have the right. offensive touchdown. Two pick sixes and four field goals, though. Do you think we'll see a 60-yarder this year? Tom Kraft said that in practice he's hit a 60. You know. Now, coaches will say that, but he had him trot out for a 54 and a 53 <laughs> today. Did. And he cleared it pretty well, both of them. Fair caught by Ty Moore. And RCC takes over with 5.02 to play. The rest of the way here, you just want to stay healthy, right, Jeff? Got to play. You got to, you know, get guys in maybe that haven't played and, and just play smart. Next week, Golden West comes into Wheelock. It'll be Jeff and Nick Rice on the call for that one. J.J. Tucker splits out to the near side for RCC. Odom gives to Bennett the hit on the play. Matthew Pochin from Dana Hills High. Second down for the Tigers. 
Now, Tom Kraft says, you know, he's fine with two QBs. We played two QBs in 2017. We played two QBs in 2019. But he also likes Jordan Barton, young QB from Damien. He said, you know, Jordan could get some action as well. Obviously, I don't think we'll see him tonight. But Coach did mention his name when we spoke this week. Bennett up the middle. Bennett surges down up the 45 of Saddleback. Stop made on the play by Jace Hunter. Capo Valley product for the Bobcats. And if you're Riverside, you're just going to try to get those, move the sticks a couple times. Keep the clock running. Yeah, exactly. Odom also some pretty impressive numbers at Grossmont. And he's one of those kids we were talking before the game. Here's the give to Bennett on the left side. And he's bent back immediately. A, ca a cavalcade of tacklers there. First man to him was James Huffman, the freshman from Shorecrest High in Shoreline, Washington, Pacific Northwest. But so he was one of those guys, 2019 graduate, who kind of falls between the cracks because of the way the recruiting works. Or I think mean, 2020 grad, because you played in 2019, and then you know, then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. So if you're one of those late guys, you would you won't you couldn't be a late signee. Bennett again bottled up. Third down coming up. Huffman there near on that play had some help as well. I think poaching was there as well. Because he, in high school, 4,100 yards passing, 38 TDs over the course of his career, and rushed for over 1,000 yards and 18 TDs. Already mentioned he was a starting point guard for his high school team as a freshman and also sported a 4-6 GPA. So Whoa. he obviously had some options. 4-6. Yeah. Bennett, good play by Odom there. Kind of almost mishandled the snap but get, regained control and handed it off. Kyle Thomas on the tackle for Saddleback as the clock ticks down. So they were talking when he was, you know, uh, he's playing for, for, for Grossmont. Some, some Ivies were in on him. You know, it's a little different situation with them, some, some schools on the East Coast. But, you know, when the whole, when the pandemic blew everything up, a lot of options dried up. And yeah. we were having a nice talk with the, a, the new AD at RCC. Although Jim Woodridge was here, by the way. I saw him. I uh, got to say hi to Coach. And talking about how, you know, it's really affected basketball. You know, in terms of the glut of the transfer portal, but that extra year of eligibility now all of a sudden has kind of made everything a little bit haywire. Yes, it has. So Chavez back on to punt. Back to receive is Barry for Saddleback. And now RCC calls a timeout with 158 to play in the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us. The home opener for RCC, their national title defense. They won it all in 2019. Of course, in state of California, we did not play col uh, junior college football with any junior college sports actually last season. Yeah, nothing. It was, it was nothing. barren. It was tough. It was like yeah. the ice planet Hoff. <laughs> not much going on. <laughs> I can't wait to see what the head basketball coach at RCC looks like. If, if Kraft looks as, as relaxed, well, he did at the first half, or at the beginning of the game. I can't wait to see Phil Matthews. Phil Matthews is pretty another, another intense guy. Line is the 39. Chavez sends the kick back to the five. Barry with the return, and he gets hit. So about a 34-yard kick and a one-yard return unofficially. Tackle on the play, Kenton Allen. Allen, a freshman linebacker out of Vegas, Silverado High School in Vegas. So first and ten for Saddleback. Give running outside for Saddleback. Jane St. Fleur, St. Fleur, San Diego kid out of El Cajon. And Nicholas Hill checks back in at quarterback. We saw him briefly in the first half. He's out of Irvine, Beckman High, which our friend Ken Mashinsky was the head coach there for right. a couple of years. Had a couple of good years there. Did Coach Mush? Hey, look at the look at the tuba guys walking behind the stadium. It's kind of 
Look at it's that. ominous, yeah. That's a very ominous. St. Fleur, the El Cajon product, pounds up to the 10. Clock continues to move. He's a Christian high school product. Three carries, 38 yards against Glendale on the 4th of September. Where are those guys going, Gazal? I, it, we need the, the camera on the tubas walking behind the field. I don't know where the heck they're going. It's marching down Riverside. <laughs> like it's like the Walking Dead, except it's the Walking Brass, <laughs> right? Walking tubas. Third and four. Throw to the outside is complete. Making the catch for Saddleback John Jennings. Jennings, the freshman from Allen, Texas. Coach Crabb's got him from everywhere. First down. There they are. Look at look the march of the two bus. Uh, it's just the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. Look at those things. That guy needs to shine his right there. Come on. Come on, band. Coach Gorham coaching him up. Come on. Over the middle, incomplete. Pulls the trigger, does Nicholas Hill. D on the defense was Sakil Aka, the freshman from Lake Elsinore. Intended receiver for Saddleback, Simeon Martin. Tight end. Out of Capo Valley High. Second and ten. Trips to the far side for Saddleback. Option. Up to the 20-yard line. Keeping it is Drew Nash. Jason Mitchell, the big fella, he's a Cajon product, in on the tackle. Final moments of this one. Throw to the outside, incomplete, intended for Remigio on the coverage for RCC, Lovewin Don Willis. Clock stops, 19 ticks left in this one. Pretty impressive performance as it's fourth down. The punt team will come out for Saddleback. Widmer has been pretty good today for the Bobcats. Yes, he has. Ty Moore, the freshman from Vegas, back deep. Short kick from Widmer. It's going to bounce and just be down at the 36-yard line. So he'll get a credit for a 16-yard punt, and that'll be it. They'll let the clock tick down. I guess we'll let the clock tick down, but they won't hear because there's still nine seconds on the board, and they'll have to run a play. Will the Tigers. Pretty impressive, Jeff. 33-6 to against what looked to be a pretty good Bobcats team looking at the film when they played Glendale. Well, I thought we were going to have a shootout. We had the greatest defensive team I've seen RCC uh, come out with in a long time. One offensive score, and the rest has just been phenomenal defense. And James kicking. Cook can cook can coach a little bit. The defensive coordinator for RCC is Odom takes a knee, and that'll be it. Now the clock will run out, and the final will be 33-6. RCC knocks off Saddleback. They go to 3-0 and on the year, Jeff. The Bobcats will have their record even at 1-1. One and one. And to me, three things stand out. And you tell me what you think. Line play, both sides, for RCC, defense and offense. Special teams, obviously. Yes. Ricardo Chavez. And then uh, the defense, James Cook's defense. Hey, you hit it directly on the head. And I'll tell you what, they're going to get better and better and better. I'm sure Coach Kraft would love to see his offense score a lot more points. And that will change. We know that just because that's who he is. But, man, tip our, cats off, our hats off to this great defense. I mean, if I had told you at the outset that RCC was going to score one offensive touchdown today, what, what would you have thought? I just said they would have lost. 
But you got two pick sixes, Ricardo Chavez, yeah. and just a stalwart effort by that defense across the board in a 33-6 to win over Saddleback. So RCC goes to 3-0 and with the win. Back next week on Riverside TV, it'll be Golden West will be the opponent. Running down some final numbers here before we say goodbye. Uh, defensively, let's look at the total offense for Long Beach, 225 yards. Riverside, although uh, it, didn't, you know, it was kind of a slow yeah. game, nearly 400 yards. It was 359. The only offensive touchdown was Bud Burney completed Jamal Houston for 29 yards. That came in the third quarter. The other two TDs were pick sixes. Uh, in in the fourth quarter and in the second quarter, DeMarco Moore had one, and then uh, Carlton Johnson had one, and uh, that was it. Uh, the two touchdowns, and then of course Ricardo Chavez, four of five uh, on field goals. He had one from 54, one from 53, one from 23, and one I believe from 43. He missed one from 35. Damn it! Almost perfect, but he beat him by himself. The leg beat him. Dean Connors, 80 yards on the ground. Jamal Houston had 61 yards receiving. And uh, kickoff returns, Lawrence Starks had two returns for nearly 30 yards each. And there, therein lies the rub today. 33-6 to six the final. Penalties, though, that's the one thing they're going to want to correct, Jeff. 14 penalties for Riverside for 141 yards. That comes on the heels of them being penalized 13 times last week against Long Beach City College. Yeah, you got to clean those up if you're going to defend your title because it's only going to get tougher. So I guess the subscript from the first two games, James Cook doing a great job with the defense, allowed six points against Long Beach City and then six points tonight against the Bobcats. Final thoughts, Jeff Gorham. Just, you know, it's a complete opposite of what we saw in, you know, two years ago when they were just dominating offensively. But I'll tell you what, this defense can definitely dominate themselves, and I think they're going to be very, very tough to beat this year. Home opener tonight from Wheelock Stadium. The home team crowd goes home happy. RCC with a 33-6 win over Saddleback. Until next time, for Jeff Gorham and our entire award-winning Riverside TV crew, my name is Ghazal Hassan. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.